I mean, that's not wrong, but it's content, still all that matters. Content is key, my friend. Content is Because you can everything. have bad content, and that still gets views. Uh, yeah. Just have 24 hours of the useless content, and for some reason, that somehow gets you better results than, like, one hour of quality content. Well, that's because it's bad content people bitch about, good content nobody actually talks about. <laughs> or just, yes. y you are the person who runs lo-fi hip-hop beats to chill and study to. <laughs> and you just happen to stumble upon the greatest market of all time. I'm gonna make sure the stream Which is lo-fi hip-hop beats. I don't yes. know why that's so successful, but I also understand why it's so successful. Yeah. Oh, fuck <laughs> off. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah. That's good times. Sorry. Anyway. Something incredibly unrelated has happened. Welcome, welcome everyone uh, to the, the under like... underground uh, <laughs> Delve Live. The super secret Delve Live that no one knew was happening because we're ghosts. It's... We're ghosts. Nobody pays attention to us, right? Okay. No one really pays <laughs> attention. It's okay. Ooh, we're spooky ghosts now. That was last month. That, that was last Christmas. That was a different one. That is true. Uh, but on the <laughs> it's November, therefore it's Christmas. It's no it's November. Well, you see, the thing is, we had to do a, a second live show because, you know, it's Thanksgiving time, so we're stuffed. So uh, our episodes are stuffed too. So we have to have multiples of them all month. We're just gorging ourselves on live streams. Um. <laughs> Oh, is that what we're doing? <laughs> I appreciate the terrible joke, but I also note that that is a terrible joke. Yes, that is fine. Hello. But you welcome know what? To the, welcome to it's, our shows. It's kind of oh, yeah. terrible jokes. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> Damn it. Somehow, Don't you pull my own joke against me. Somehow, it will probably work out in our favor. <laughs> uh, but good news is that uh, this week, DC is back from GameholeCon. Hey! Yay. 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 Yeah, we don't have the boo boo Zela for you. Sorry, but um, uh, I, I function as a temporary air horn. Yeah. Oh, temporary. I don't have a slide whistle. I don't have anything. I'm just. I, I, oh man, that's that sucks. Um, DC, tell me a little bit about Game Hole Con. I've never been, and uh, I was wondering what you did while you were there. Uh, it is a small gaming convention, mostly focused on D&D Adventures League. Uh, there are other games that go on there, and it's in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. And it was a lot of fun. I got to meet people I've only ever talked to online. So oh, that's good. That's good. That yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. And I basically just went to panels and watched shows. Oh, I cool. didn't actually nice. play any game. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Did you have to moderate any of the panels? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> that, we, that's uh, terrifying. No, don't do that. So the, most of the D&D mods were at the show except for one. And so he was the only person on the channel all weekend. <laughs> so. Oh, well, that's that's got to be fun for him. <laughs> um, hey, something to do. Um, but that's good. But that that's that's nice. You didn't get to play, though? That's kind of... I mean, no, I my I filled my schedule of panels. And oh yeah. Uh, yeah, talking to people, so that'll do. I know that feeling. Yeah, you you fill it all with interesting, expansive topics, and then you realize I didn't play anything. I didn't do the thing I like all weekend. Yeah, what's that about? I, <laughs> well, I mean that's kind of like when when Alex and I went down to uh, Beefig. We got a chance to sit down and play a couple things, but most of the time we were just like doing short form interviews with people. That was fun. That was expensive, stupid. but fun. It was it was fun. It was fun. I mean, we didn't like eat or use the bathroom or anything for eight hours while we were there. But, <laughs> but um, you Listen, know. Listen, I I I'll be honest. If I'm going to something like that, I'm probably going to use eat more than I'm going to use the bathroom. But still, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that causes problems down the road too. Um, oh yeah, it does. yeah. Phew. Uh, no, no, no. It was it was one full day, and uh, yeah, we basically from the moment they opened to the moment they shut down the the con floor, we were pretty much just in it, nonstop. 
Uh, but mm, uh, yep. but that's good. We didn't even see everything. We no, oh, there's there's a whole other floor I didn't even go to. I know. They still tell me about it every year, so that we can get our badges. But uh, but yeah, <laughs> we don't have quite as much of an open window to do it. Um, which is too bad. Oh, I, or capital. Or cap capital would be really great. Um. It's funny because they send out a thing, and they wanted to let me know that uh, Eric Malinsky from Imaginary Worlds was going to be one of the uh, panel judges at BFIG. And I was like, oh, that'd be cool. I might actually get a chance to, to interact with him, uh, maybe maybe do a little interview if I was going, uh, because I've listened to that show. That's, that's a big deal. Um, but they misspelled his name in the brief, and I knew that they had done that. So I responded. Oh, no. I responded back and said, "I don't think his name is Eric Molsky. I'm pretty sure it's Eric Malinsky from Imaginary oh, no. World." And they responded, oh, no. they responded back and they were like, "Oh, thank you for telling us this. So we can correct." Thank you for notifying us before we emailed his publishing team. <laughs> also, we probably shouldn't even email his publishing team. Oh my god. Before, well, uh, after I, you guys, I the people imagine. we're trying to communicate to. I mean, I'm, I can only imagine how big the mailing list was that I was on, but I, I was like, well, at least they could fix it. <laughs> like, they could, they could do a corrected one later. I'd, I'd like to at least let them know, because <laughs> cause I happen to be in the one position where I happen to know this information is incorrect, and I can, <laughs> I can cite that it is. But, um, but, uh, yeah. So hey, you know, but hey, if they wanted to uh, put me up for having uh, helped them out with that, uh, I would love to be able to go again. <laughs> text, text, res uh, I don't know what's the third. Uh, correctionist. Oh, yes. Text res correctionist. That's I'm gonna be you. the red shirt for their thing. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'm just That's the red dangerous. shirt that comes in. <laughs> At BlizzCon, inevitably, <laughs> and <laughs> corrects information. Um, I'm just glad that that's a theme. I do love Let's that be. that's a theme. I'm glad that the people who who take that that to those topics that probably they don't want brought up are just yeah. like, I'm the red shirt, I'm the target. Yeah, that should be the new official outfit at BlizzCon, is just wear a red shirt. <laughs> My just... favorite thing. I've seen at BlizzCon though is a red shirt that was also cosplaying as Winnie the Pooh. Yep. Winnie the Pooh wears a red shirt. That's beautiful. And if they come up and ask a question, no one can air it <laughs> for any reason. I mean, you can't air it in certain countries. Well, yeah, yeah. Who knows? the The year is young yet. Um, but uh, no, I'm. <laughs> well, I gotta remember though, if I, if I go to uh, B Fig or any conventions, make sure that my shirt is indeed red, so that if I make any valid points or criti or critiques, uh, I am already in costume uh, for the running theme. Gotta make sure I do that. Uh, you don't want to accidentally be the meme. You want to be on purposely be the meme. Yeah. Well, you you got to dress to meme press. That's what you have to do. Meme press, by the way, is a new word I made up. It's it's where you impress, but with memes. There you go. Yes, you totally made made this on your own. Yes, I did, I and I had that. to I had to explain it in depth so you know that it worked well. Uh, clearly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, so anyway, I was uh, I was trying to figure out what we could actually do as like a topic of conversation since. Um, we can only have so many bitch fests every month. <laughs> we, we, I mean, have, we have to. If you go from Delve to Bitchcast, this, yes. these are possibilities. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, exactly. Nathan Nathan's Rantometer can only go up to ten once, like every couple months, or we start to lose <laughs> people's interest. Uh, so, so I thought that maybe, uh, maybe a useful topic. Of conversation would be what is a, this? This is not what I signed up for. A productive, oh, <laughs> a conversation <laughs> topic, a roundtable conversation of one thing, and I I had suggested to Alex, you know, we we could kind of 
jump off of, of what he wrote an article of uh, this this month, but then he realized that he would just end up doing his own personal bitch fest all about Reddit. Yeah, I'll, I'll have my own personal bitch fest about cons on Reddit. Well, you know what? You're uh, you're free. You're free to do that. Reddit needs to uh, have its criticism. Uh, Reddit needs more bitching. Let's be honest. There's not I mean, enough yes. complaints on Reddit. No, there's enough complaints on Reddit. They're just by assholes. <laughs> exactly. Your voice, ne your clearly highly intelligent voice, needs to be heard among the swaths of fools. We need clear. That sounded like sarcasm. <laughs> we need. Really, I sound sarcastic. That's a shocker. We need clearer, more educated. <laughs> Pointless ranting about things in this world. We require them. Um, yeah, no, com complaints need to come from the, the very eloquent and tad loquacious. If they don't, then they're kind of <coughs> useless. So, so shine on you crazy diamond. Where did they, where did I, I'm sorry. I, I was about to say, where did I eat that to? And that was very unrelevant to the topic at hand. Where did you eat? Where did you eat? eat? That, where did I eat that to? Oh, okay. I'm I'm so confused. I should don't worry about it. Yeah. See, that's what we should we should have done another Reddit special, Alex. We should we should just uh we should just jump on the subreddits and answer questions from the subreddits. No, again. see, I'm I'm ma I'm mad at the subreddits right now because people are garbage. Did 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 they have uh stupid comments about your thing? The, yeah, I mean, it wasn't like even at my, about my thing. It's just they were being condescending assholes. But you know, they did look at it. You yeah, no. Very happy did they though? That. Reddit can be condescending without looking at anything. No, I had no. I have the analytics. They people actually oh, wow. did link to the thing. <laughs> it, yeah, we we actually got a bunch of website views yeah. from me sharing it on. Two different subreddits. To, to I, I, was, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm kind of surprised that they actually looked at it before being rude. Yeah. I Me mean, too, honestly. Yeah. I mean, to give you a little bit of an idea, like, more people, like, looked at Alex's uh, article than, like, pretty much the last 50 posts that I made. Um, well, which... you don't share stuff on Reddit, and I rarely I share, share stuff on Reddit, on Reddit because, Reddit. yeah, it got views on it, but it, yeah. like, just... The only comments I got on Reddit were negative comments, because oh. people are just assholes. <laughs> I see. Well, Reddit, Reddit is a great bed of, if you don't agree with my opinion, you why are you here? Right, right. Well, you know, I never consider going to Reddit for um, introspective, like, conversations uh, about, like, constructive criticism and... And you know, actual discussions about thing. I, I always figure that if I put something out on Reddit, it's mostly no, you shut up. You know, that's pretty much the, the general vibe of of Reddit, which is why I don't really interact with the it very much. That is the Reddit theme, is because it's divided by subreddit. It is explicitly, do you share an interest with me? Therefore, we have a same. We share what we're interested in. So, mm. yeah, you're going to find a lot of people who have an echo chamber. Shocking, I know. Yeah. yeah. The internet I... has an echo chamber? Really? Wow. The internet is yeah, an echo chamber. It, it, it's, it's definitely <clears throat> not the place where you find interesting, expansive, conversational topics. Right, yeah. I, I think that's kind of the problem that I had with it. I, I don't know if there's a lot of other really good tabletop forums uh, specifically for that. Uh, besides Reddit, it's very difficult on social media because, um, you know, they, they've they had so many problems on so many at this point uh, where it's kind of hit or miss. Like, I'm on mm. Twitter quite a bit, but, uh, you know, that's that's always kind of like hit or miss in terms of like you have to you have to be able to curate your community pretty well on Twitter because the 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 rando jackasses have a tendency to get in there <laughs> if you're if if you're not really uh you know trying to figure it you thin the herd a little bit um but uh you know sometimes you have really interesting conversations and, and really lovely people that are on there and sometimes it's a shit show uh like from the get-go <laughs> and uh and when it gets bad 
Yeah, it's bad. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, like I uh, I had mentioned, I made an off comment on one of the um the Slack rooms. I'm in with a with my good old friend David Somerville because he's you know one of my favorite people. Thanks. And I was like, man, people on the internet are jerks, and David's just like, yeah, I saw that. That was like not cool. It's like, oh, you read that? He's like, yeah, that was just like, people are just jerks. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, you know, people... I said he agreed. He went, yeah. Yeah, people are yeah. terrible. Uh, you know, <laughs> but you know, you kind of, like, uh, pe people have been uh, uh, dicks to me uh, when I put stuff out, too. And, uh, and my response back is kind of like, I don't even know if you looked at the thing. <laughs> like, like most of the time, it's like, I, I, I will accept your criticism. I had, like, one of my attempting to plays, and I put it out there, and some guy came back and was like, you know, making fun of, some, of, of a thing that people like, it doesn't make you cool. It just makes you an asshole. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like... Or, or, and, and and this is this is why no one looks at your stuff. No one likes dicks. And I'm sitting there, kind of like going, "Have you not seen the internet? What do you mean people <laughs> don't like dicks? <laughs> are you kidding? Here. People who make fun of games aren't popular online. <laughs> you... uh, I feel like Yahtzee is one of the most popular game reviewers out there. And at, at, after, like, Angry Joe, Jim Sterling, Donkey, and everybody else who spend their life pretty much criticizing and making fun of games. And literally, I just did my fun little video where I made my silly character. But, but here was the thing. It was Sword Art Online. So you get all the oh, anime no. fans who come on, and they're like, Those It's not cool, you're fans. making fun of the anime. And it's like, dude... First of all, even if you like the anime, the game is not you the should anime. Have, you should have criticisms if you like the anime. That's, <laughs> that's just the end result of this. <laughs> but, I sat, but I was sitting there kind of like going, dude, if you like the show, that's fine. It doesn't mean the game is good. And it also <laughs> means that, that like if, if the game is not good or if the game is a disservice to the show and you like the show, you should also have a problem with the game. <laughs> Like, I don't get what you and and like this is in the review. It's just a let's play. I'm having I'm goofing around in the game. I'm not making. You, you also got to remember that a lot of people, especially in the online communities, will project yeah. their uh, elitist tendencies towards certain things. Oh, where they're really? like, oh, my opinion's right and yours is wrong. It's I didn't like, know. no, it's I didn't tell you mine was right. I like my example specifically is the article where I just went, hey. Here's some thoughts I had yeah. and I wanted to share. And it's more for like your more amateur designers and newbies who are coming in here who might not think about this stuff. How, how dare you express thoughts? I don't know if that came off in my tone because yeah. a lot of people probably don't listen to us talk, but I mean, I'm I read. not really, I try not to be condescending usually, you know? Oh, no, I um, no, no, I, I read mm -hmm. and I edited it. I, I didn't find it to be condescending. <clears throat> I, 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 but it was to be condescending one here. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't to be like, hey, you guys don't understand these things. It was to be like, hey, just make sure you keep some of this stuff in your mind uh, as you're going right. forth and designing games. And a bunch yeah. of, uh, two, not a bunch of people, but a couple of people were like, oh, well, making your game more niche is like not good. I'm like, how would that make it more niche? It's, it's the, not niche. one of the you're people literally. About, yeah. I, that's that you were talking about the opposite essentially is they were like to yeah but being for rich. they're like that's for like a big company but indie designers already have enough hard enough <clears throat> hard enough time to get an audience um well so doing these things will just make it even harder and i'm like <laughs> i'm like and none of these things should be hard for you to implement in your game no if you're going about thinking of them as you make your game or even to impl implement after but these are things that shouldn't be hard to realize well the, the... and it's like these would only serve to get more people into your game yes. not less people into your game that... i don't understand your reasoning yeah here. that's that's what i was uh, i was gonna say is that like well if indie developers are having a hard time getting an audience maybe trying to make them more accessible would help them get an audience like this might be useful stuff to consider because uh, what i was getting from the art from the article was it's not that nobody ever happened to think about any of this stuff but it's very possible 
that if you have been devel developing a game or if you are new, um, some of these things may not necessarily have occurred to you, and it's worth putting it down to say, hey, if some of these things are things you haven't considered, you might just want to be aware of it. Like, that's what I right. took away from it. Which, like, I don't know if Drunk Paul or DC read the article, and it's fine if you didn't. I know people, I don't like to read a lot of things, especially if they're, like, novel length. I have a really hard time interacting with posts on Reddit and stuff like that because of it. It's like, I don't want to read three pages of why this thing is a thing. It's like, mm. TLDR it for mm. me, and then I'll do it. But so I get that. Even when, if it's, I am that kind of person where I don't, I tend to not read a whole lot. Like, if I see the title, I go, hmm, that's an interesting place, but I'm not going to – but if I don't read it, I'm not going to comment on it. I'm not – unless it's a blatantly clickbaity thing, and I go, hey, that's clickbaity. I, I, I will comment on how clickbaity that is mm. before I read. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't comment or, like, judge what someone has done or what someone has stated without a – an actual understanding of what this person is stating. I don't. I don't post an opinion countering or calling out someone if someone has simply stated an opinion without knowing what they're actually stating. Yeah, there's no point in that. I'm just going. Well, your initial words do I don't like. Therefore, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not good feedback. That's that's very lazy feedback. Um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but on a on a side note, though, I do really want to create uh, like one of those blogs that has like a billion ads just so that I can make some revenue. But I'm gonna call it Master <laughs> Clickbaiter. <laughs> master <laughs> Clickbaiter. Master Clickbaiter. Yeah, I am the master of my web domain. So. So there's a thing that I have to get going. <laughs> I need to get, get some get some revenue in from this. That that can fund Delve. That's what I do. Is Master Clickbaiter can fund Delve <laughs> into the future. <laughs> there's a thought. Um, yeah, I, mean, I I think that like we don't necessarily get a lot of feedback back from uh, people, but I like to think that. Um, when people are, like, listening to the podcast, reading the articles, watching videos or anything, uh, they, they aren't assuming that we're trying to talk down to people as if they're stupid. We're trying to, you know, just add stuff to a conversation that should indeed be a conversation. And, and I think that there's just some people who take offense that anyone would add, like, another thought that doesn't fit their worldview um and uh i don't know i can't help you like it's one of those things like i, I can't help you dude uh <laughs> we're not here i'm not here to attack you i'm here to add another thing into the mix to the conversation that's what i'd like paul, to paul is here to attack you paul is I here am. to attack me <laughs> paul is here to attack but, me. but on a specific level Yes. Not a professional. Oh, that, that's go. true. Perfect. On a very personal level, you're going to yeah. explain to me what mistakes I made in my life that have led me to this point. <laughs> and... I, I am the ghost of all Christmas pasts. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, it's November. I can't bring that up yet. Not yet. Next month. At least on principle. Next month. We will do <laughs> we will I do know it. it's a month away, but I refuse to do it now. Right. I have principles, damn it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair That's enough. Fair. Most fair of them enough. involve alcohol, but they're still principles. Well, alcohol you know, principle, principle pr fortified. <clears throat> we usually call it fortified. <laughs> we have fortified <laughs> principles when it comes to alcohol. Uh, so, so anyway, that was something that we were uh, thinking about talking about. But again, we're going to just talk about Reddit a lot. Um, I had another thing that was based off of a James Intracasso tweet. Uh, then DC had actually suggested, hey, you might actually want to uh, write to him. Uh, if you have questions about his tweet. And I actually wanted to get his thoughts on, on his personal takeaway, so I figured maybe we'll table that till next month because uh, I just I just said that out to him yesterday. So um, maybe I can get some feedback from him on, on that particular thing that he was... I'd, I'd like to know what he actually had to think to say about it himself because he usually doesn't answer his own questions. 
Um, but <laughs> I was kind of wondering what he wanted to, to what he actually thought of for that. Uh, so probably going to table that till uh, December. Or, or one of our stuffed episodes since November is just chock full. We started with we started with the cranberry sauce last week, and now we're on to uh, turkey, but we haven't gotten to the sides or the uh, the inevitable pie. That will be the fourth. Clearly, as our reference to earlier discussions of Sean as an Irish name, you need more potatoes. <laughs> oh, the potatoes! Then we can have lots of vodka too. Yeah. See, yeah. now you're literally speaking my language. Yeah, yeah. That, and it's that's not, fair. It's not Russian. It's alcohol. <laughs> you know what? Uh, that's that's all you need. Well, you know, everything eventually uh, comes down to alcohol. Um, as long as it's At fermented. least in human history. In human history, yeah. Pre- basically all human advancement pretty much, pretty much revolves around some kind of an inebriation. Um, of course, usually you have to wait till you're sober before you actually act on any of it, but, but, uh, the best ideas usually happen, uh, under some kind of... The best stories happen. Well, the best stories do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so anyway, those were subjects that I was thinking about doing that we're not going to be able to do. So, uh, so hey... These are things I brought up that we can't do. That's that's absolutely right. In the meantime, though, Paul, did you get a chance to play some Outer Worlds? Because that's pretty much. I like, did. Yeah, from this. I have remarkably enjoyed it uh, a lot more than yeah. I was expecting, actually. Yeah, I know. I know that that was my overall takeaway too. Um, <laughs> um, I was expecting a Fallout like with the you know the classic yeah, it's not capitalism yeah. just tries to kill everyone message which is yeah. not a lie in any way but still right right it's a it's a good setting for it borderlands had that same <laughs> thing too like the the corporate wars exactly. there's there's definitely but an air of that but the i will honestly say the message in this game of calf you know a corporation will treat you as an object and then tap turn you into every and you know grind you into every source of profit it can mm. don't don't even pretend like it's that's not what's going to happen mm. and that's the message it beats you over the head with and i'm like well i'd like to say you're wrong but i live in america yeah and we know that that's not necessarily yeah. false that's that's definitely not yeah. exactly wrong no living in america. so overall I, I like it i actually I've been enjoying the combat system more than I expected. It's very good. I like, um, I actually it, like... It's robust enough. Yeah, I actually like temporal time dilation better than bats in practice. Like, it makes yes. more sense to me. I, I like it as this sort of take the time to make your decision and focus on what you you need, not a, hmm, shoot him in the head five times. Right, right. Well, I, I like that it didn't take me out of the action like Vats usually does. Like, Vats always feels like a separate thing from the game itself, where you go into a tactical mode, um, which which is kind of like, uh, uh, almost almost like a holdover from tabletop gaming and, and CRPGs, because that's its history. Yes. Um, but the, the TTD system, where literally you're, you're always through your scope, just like you normally are, you're you're always through your first person perspective, like you normally are when you're shooting. Uh, but now time has slowed, and you can actually go up and down and figure out, okay, if I hit here, that stuns. Here, it it uh, maims. Here, it blinds. Like just yeah. just by moving your actual gun up or down made a lot more sense to me and and really felt like i wasn't just like pulled out of that moment uh and i was like oh this this works better a hundred percent i agree the the vats was very much a turn comes from this old turn-based rpg system where this was like here's your first person shooter with you know elements of that sort of system actually blended in where no you don't get to stop time entirely to yeah. decide what you want but here's a system that allows you to make more minute decisions and more you know more direct 
influence on what's happening and it's just yeah. a very interesting twist on it and i also just have i've loved the characters oh the characters are lovely like you like you remember npcs that show up for like just an hour or two and it's it's hard to i remember an them. npc i got rid of yeah. as memorably as an npc that has been following me the whole time yeah yeah it's it's pretty i mean parvati is is like everything for me oh she's uh, great she, well she's basically kaylee from firefly and i am so there for that um that's basically she is it. adorable and wants she's adorable and willing to murder and therefore in my good good books oh yeah she's 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 <laughs> awesome I, but um yeah i will her. say vicar max had Vicar Max was one of those characters. Mm. Um, if you if you don't meet him, if you haven't met him in game, please do. Oh, I, he's one I of those characters that threw me for a loop for a <laughs> short while, where I went, "Yes, hmm, who is this character? What what do they represent?" And then finding out what they are and treating them less as what I thought they were and more as who they are. Yeah, gave an interesting perspective and a real interesting look on what the designers of the game were hoping for yeah yeah i liked the idea that you have you have like these six uh you, you know companion characters and they are all very much the the outcasts of this society that really did not work for any of them and mm -hmm. you get to see aspects of like what the ground floor of this world is through their eyes in, and how it manifested in so many ways. Like Ellie is like my like probably my favorite though overall, <laughs> as like as like the rich girl who just wanted to like like make her parents angry by going out and like trying to you know like rob yeah. people and cause trouble and get dirty <laughs> and 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 became a doctor that loves to shoot people all the time. <laughs> Can you blame her though? I, I will say I like that um Parvati was your first character because she is not Yeah. The the most interesting thing about her to me is she is very much entrenched in the ideology of this world. She is oh, yeah. influenced and affected in, in influenced and affected by the ideology of this world mm. that she has grown up with. Yes. With. Yeah. So she is not your rebellious companion or your your new ideology she is a person who has lived in this world yeah and even though she's not quite a mem she's not the perfect member of it yeah she is someone who believes in it yeah so yeah a, a minor spoiler to anyone who is play wants to play mm. the first mission she you're on she actually kind of sides with the corporate yes she does. ideology there yeah and it's it's a bit of she throws you for a, a bit throw. of a loop it really she is goes, yeah there's something else there they, yeah. and she's the first point in that game where you go oh there's something more here yeah and i love the subtlety that that mm -hmm. forces you to accept and i and that that was actually something where i was like oh now the thing i oh. thought i was gonna do isn't necessary oh gee now i feel because essentially now i feel like an asshole right right i mean it's really early in the game but basically basically what obsidian did is they were like we're gonna do we're gonna do the megaton problem again essentially but we're gonna make the stakes a mm -hmm. lot higher because you have to decide basically the fate of one of two groups because you can't yep. proceed if you don't you, you need it's a not power blow up the nuke or don't blow up the nuke. Yeah. It's, it's there's one town, there's another town. You have to pick one that survives and what the end result is. Yeah, basically that's what has to happen, and um and so you're like you're forced into like, I gotta choose A or B, and and I know that the consequences are gonna be dire for one or the other, and chances are that group's not gonna not gonna fare well, in the end. Now, now, ultimately, because I actually called my character Malcolm, because I was like, yeah, I'm going all in on the Firefly references right now. All right. I, I, I was like, brown coat, gotta do it. I, got, I, I gotta try and save the, you know, the ones that are trying, the Botanical Society, right? I, I gotta save them. 
Um, but I don't know how far I, I've I've finished the game now. But what I was so surprised by, without giving away anything, is that like at the very end of this whole thing, the decisions you made back at the beginning in that first colony, you have to then revisit. And <laughs> once that, that happens, yeah. Once once that happens, and you're like, wait, you want me to do what now? <laughs> I I was like, uh, can I sidestep this part? Because <laughs> because because I really feel like maybe I did more than I originally thought I was doing in this game. <laughs> um, maybe I can. But maybe I can stop. As far as I'm concerned, that's the way you should be playing your game. Oh yeah. That's the way you should be designing it. Yeah. Hey. This is the first decision your character gets to make. What is the effect it has? It has severe repercussions, and it's probably going to influence your entire playstyle. Yes, you may have changed halfway through to play something different, but those actions, those consequences don't go away. Yeah, yeah. What is your response? I will say, yeah. the character I played almost turned into a pure cold-blooded killer mm. because I shot the first person, three people I met, including an NPC who gave me his gun. Oh, good. It's like, oh, okay, sure. And I went, That's great. bang, okay. Oh, oh, this world is not the hostile world I thought it was. No. Oh, no. I feel bad. Yeah, I, uh, I tried to solve things with words. I managed, I have managed to solve... I'd say 80% of my problems with world. Yeah. Like, Sometimes that's not can't. just all the world to run into. Yeah. I manage to solve with words. Yeah. Sometimes... And I you, love it. Yeah, sometimes you really just don't have a good way out of it. Um, only because I could solve it with words, but it means that I'm <laughs> now agreeing to something worse. Um, I could solve this with words, or I could just kill you, Well, well and everyone well, would be safer. Well, you know, the thing is, is that sometimes what happened was that I ra wound up in quests where, look, I could try and solve this problem with words and let you keep doing what you're doing, but the problem is, is that what you're doing is dangerous, and you're, you're not going... Either, either I kill you now, or you make this peace process... And untenable, or you screw up plans that are actually going to unite the colony, and you're not going to just leave. Like, like, like it's obvious. Like you're you're not going down unless you're fighting. Like you're that that's it. So sometimes it's like, well, bigger picture here. Uh, it's what the, do I have uh, to do? What, what's that quote from Thor Egeron? It can't be you. You're just Awful. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to rule this, but it can't be you. You're just awful, awful. and yeah. that's what it it ends up becoming. Because on <laughs> one hand, no, I don't want this capitalist hellscape to continue existing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but it it can't. There's you're certain... just terrible. Yeah, and uh, it's funny because like you meet some people in this world that are like definitely part of that system, even high up in that system, that seem pretty nice like like maybe they're maybe they're flawed but they seem like you know they aren't evil and then there are others that are it's not that they're evil that they're just so cold that they don't care it doesn't matter to them um like when you eventually like find out more about the chairman like the chairman just kind of sees the whole thing as working pieces it's not that he's it's not that he's necessarily malicious about anything it's just that People, colonies, society, the whole, it's basically just a matter of moving resources around the board to get where you need to be. And that's, that's all it is to him, in some ways. And I, I like that, though, because it felt more realistic than just saying, uh, get the mustache-twirling villain out. Ah, yeah, I'm gonna make life hell for all you assholes. I'm gonna do it. Uh, you know, they, they don't have those characters. Well, very much. <laughs> they have one or two. The other thing that makes it interesting is even though, like, you know, you affected this one colony. Yeah. There's not going to be a whole lot of future for them if someone discovers what's happening. Yeah. Like, if you return to the status quo, everything will be status quo and people won't get bombarded by the random warships that the 
yeah. corporate overlords have. If you make their life better, there's a good chance that someone discovers that and mm -hmm. kills everyone, and that's yeah. well, well different. <laughs> There's a, there's a, this isn't really much of a spoiler because it's actually just a side quest, but when I got to Byzantium, um, there's this one woman who's, uh, telling you, she's, 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 she's like a rich girl, and she's telling her, telling you how she, like, she earned her money because her grandfather gave it to her, so, so she now has that money, and therefore she earned it by having her grandfather give her all of the money from their fortune. <laughs> and she's terrible. And I hated Beatrice, I think was her name. And, but, but, she, but she's really angry because there's this whole early retirement plan. There's a whole district of the city that's being reserved for people that are going into early retirement, and it must be paradise. And she, she hates the fact that she can't do and she can't be there, and she wants you to go and solve this problem and and destroy all these people that are that are having a great time in their city, in their little happy haven in retirement. And I I got the feeling as soon as I started this is like, oh, this is going to be like a Vault Eleven kind of thing, isn't it? And you you inevitably you go down to the early retirement center, and it's literally just a program where a bunch of droids come out and just shoot you as soon as you get off the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> just, just this is your early retirement plan is just to wipe out everyone that's in the early retirement plan. Now here's here's it's exactly the... what I thought it would be, but I'm so glad yeah. it's exactly. And that. all you're seeing, like uh, the, the drones all attack you, you can kill them, and you're seeing some of like the SAM units, like they're just cleaning up <laughs> the bodies and stuff. But this is the best part. You can then go back to that woman. And you can lie to her and tell her that it's a paradise down there, streets of gold, and you should definitely check it out for yourself. And she's <laughs> like, I'm packing my bags right now. <laughs> and <laughs> Ellie, Ellie was in my party at the time, and, and, and where, where, where Beatrice says something like, I'm going to get down there even if it kills me. And, she, and Ellie's like, her words, not ours. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And, and if you go back after that, her body is right outside the elevator. <laughs> oh, look, there she is. Death is going on. It's, Hell yes. And it's like, well, <laughs> I guess. Well, yep. I definitely caused this. Yep. But I'm playing a video but, game and therefore have no conscience. Well, most of the time I was like... That's not true, because video games have caused people more than one moral crisis in my life, but still. <laughs> but you know but you know what? At the time, I was like, somehow this seems karmically correct. <laughs> I'm, you were going to do this anyways. I'm just accelerating it. I'm, yeah, hey. Because I knew that if I just told her the truth, oh no, everyone's being executed, her response would be good. I'm glad they're all dead. They don't deserve yeah. it. And and she so would... it's like no, you know what? Your your deluded fantasy that they're all living in. Yeah, no, no. You go down, and check it for yourself. You you go you See, go earn. Look your... at it. Just look at it. Yeah, just go ahead. Just go check it out. It'll be great. You're gonna love <laughs> it. The cute. The, the what worst part to me is I'm now wondering. And please don't tell me how mm -hmm. do you figure this out. Do you go down there, get shot in the head, and just go? <laughs> well, you're useless. Or do you have to figure it out from the random watches and cleanup crews? Don't tell me. I want to figure this out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, manner I mean, in which you figure something out is just as exciting to me in an RPG as what the answer is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All, all I'll really say is it's uh, it's not hard to figure out. <laughs> like it's they, they it's don't not they don't hold it close to the vest. It becomes pretty <laughs> obvious right up at the like it becomes pretty straightforward. <laughs> Once you take yeah, on the a lot of stuff there that's fairly, like yeah, yeah. This is what I, like I think my favorite thing, and this is very early spoiler, is at some point you're talking to the mayor of the first town. Yep. And he's talking about how people get plagues, and that's just a part of life. Mm. And you ask him, has he ever eaten a vegetable in his life? <laughs> and he is offended that you would dare assume he would yeah. ever do something so horrible as go against the brand. Yes. It's like, oh, yes. That's why you're dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, because the Saltuna brand, if you were eating yep. the vegetables, yeah, you'd be going against you're the Spacer's Saltuna. Choice. Yeah, you're, you're not, you're not using Spacer's Choice. Um, the, the thing, <laughs> yeah, the, the subtext in so much of, like, one of my favorite interactions was when you meet, um, oh god, I can't remember his name, but you meet, like, the Moon Man on, uh, Groundbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> yep. you can just talk to him for so long and just watching him like oh it feels like when he's talking it feels like he's dying inside as he has to promote yep. the brand for every line of his dialogue <laughs> through the whole thing of everyone's contract his is definitely the worst yeah and i like that you could just keep asking him if he can breathe in that helmet, or how he sees, or if he, or if yep. he sweat, sweats or anything, yep. and he keeps trying to deny it, and then, then my one of my the favorite... only <laughs> does it get too hot in there? The only thing hot in here is the sales we offer. <laughs> spacer's it's like, choice. Oh. It's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice. Could you just please buy something now? So I can. I. There's poor, there's a poor great, best. there's there's a there's a great bar. I happened to have Ellie in my party at the time, and she's kind of like going, uh, he he says something about some brand, and and, and she kind of goes, oh, no, that's 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 an Auntie Cleo's brand product. <laughs> and, this, yeah. and he's like, oh god, he just I'm gonna kill me. Oh God. And she's like, ha ha, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Fenn Hill. Like, oh, I'm about to be executed for not being on brand. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> damn, damn you, Dr. Fenn Hill. <laughs> Listen, you if doing? you thought today's culture was weird about how, you know, how excessive they were about history and everything, this is worse. This yeah. is definitely worse. Yeah. Because there's legal execution ramifications. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take I'll take people on Twitter being mad over being shot in the head for saying the wrong brand slogan. It's just I it's, mean, it's why not both? <laughs> because I like being <laughs> let's alive. Do, let's I'll take I'll take both. rudeness over being dead. Um I don't know. That, that doesn't I also English. don't own any sort of businesses or media companies, therefore it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I can just be, I can be trashed all day. Whatever happens, actually use that as your slogan: "Trash Paul." It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you have any problem with Dungeon Delve in the future, just yell at me. It'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, that I'll clearly address your concerns appropriately, but yeah. not accurately represent. The concerns of this company. That's that's correct. That's correct. Perfect. Yeah, D Delve LLC. Uh, <laughs> Paul does not represent the views of Delve. I do not represent your views, but I will address your concerns. That's right. But uh... <laughs> it's like the opposite of something helpful. <laughs> There's my brand. The opposite of something helpful. That's a good one. I like that. You know, that's almost as good a slogan as "It's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice." It's still the stupidest That's slogan. A great slogan. I, just to keep, I was like, wait, did you get that backwards? No, 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 you didn't. Nope. That's you just, said that six times. You yeah. did not get that backwards. Yeah, I just I love that because it makes absolutely no sense, but I can't get it out of my head. So it actually it was actually really it smart. Works. Yeah. Because what the end result is brand loyalty. Yeah. Like. It it's, doesn't matter. It, it doesn't sense. matter what the best choice is. You're loyal to the brand, and that's what matters to these yeah. people because it's basically nationalism at that point. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's, it's brand nationalism essentially. It's like uh, yeah. McDonald's getting mad at millennials for being brand promiscuous. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, I like to eat at other fast food restaurants. No, you Alex, should be ashamed. Maybe you should McDonald's. have all their stuff on your menu too. <laughs> yes, if you have well, those... if you go to the EU, you can find Big Mac esque things. Yes, that's because, good. well, the thing is, uh, McDonald's may have sold, sued a company called Super Mac that was in Ireland for oh copyright. Uh, yes, I heard about this. I think yeah, you might have told so us about it. I may, I may have. Um, but the huh. best part about that is because they overdid it. 
the the European courts saw this and decided that Dude. you don't have a title on the word Mac. And a Big Mac is not distinct enough for you to state that it is explicit. So oh. if you're selling a Big Mac, mm -hmm. that's under McDonald's. But any other variation of that does not matter. Yeah. So Burger King, for a short while, sold Big Macs except they're flame grilled. Big Macs but bigger. Oh. Big Mac but not quite. Big Mac but better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because legally speaking, they could. And then they stopped because there was a very clear possibility that McDonald's would go, all right, fine. But they're straight up attacking us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that can get resolved in the court that no one wants the legal battle for. But yeah. the, the brief period of time where someone was sassy was entertaining. Yeah. Uh, a big, <laughs> big Mac, but no clown pubes. Like that would be where you can get it. <laughs> I would sell that. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? That's good. You know, it's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice. <laughs> God um, damn it! I'm gonna throw a knife at someone now. <laughs> <laughs> I say that as while holding one of my knives that I'm just cleaving. But the, the 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 inter the interesting thing though uh, about Outer Worlds for me was that uh, yeah, a lot of people were like, oh, it's Fallout, but it's in space. It it's. It's kind of not though. It actually takes more yeah. of a. It, it it takes more of a. I'd say like more Kotor or even like a mm. Borderlands kind of uh, methodology, uh, in terms of having yeah. like smaller spaces that are just concentrated areas that you're actually working in, where the choices that you make are actually going to do something. So it's yeah. it's really more like a Kotor. Um, it, it feels a lot less like this open world where there's this grand scheme and more of a you're bouncing between these concentrated areas of mm. localized people with you know their own societies their own effects where no the pl the thing you do two planets over probably won't matter probably right 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 and it's it's not a guarantee yeah yeah, yeah. but it's 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 enough to make you scared but it's enough it's just enough to invest you and make you think. And that's what matters. Right. It's not inherently tied. It's possibly tied. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, that's I, I kind of liked that only because, like, I thought back to um, I, I thought back to, like, a, a fable, but, yeah, to, to a KOTOR. Specifically with KOTOR, where you do these missions on a planet and you actually see the ramifications of it. Like when you went to Kashik, uh, what you do on Kashik has a very notable change in terms of what happens to that planet afterward. And you get to see that. You didn't really get that from Fallout. Like at least from mm -hmm. Fallout 3 and, and even New Vegas and 4. Um, you know, the things that you did kind of worked in certain areas, but it was... It, it was supposed to influence everything that was going on all at the same time. You didn't necessarily see it, but you knew that you had various relationships going on in, in this one big ecosystem. Um, but being able to see those really direct changes going on in specific areas um, just has a, a real kind of a, a more like a, a nose punch effect. Like, yeah, boop, mm -hmm. this, is what, this is what you just did. Um, and then they and get to go back and revisit it uh, at over the course what is of it? time. Yeah, Chrono Trigger is is one of those games where yeah. that you get that initial boom straight to the face mm -hmm. punch effect. Where yes, no, your your actions matter no matter what the heck you're doing, and in reality, they don't matter as much as you think. No, they they don't actually keep up with that. But that initial punch to the face invests you and that's yeah. just as important like at least having the effort to set the stakes matters yeah. if you don't give a shit about what my overall ex actions are i'm not gonna mm -hmm. but if you give me that initial punch in the face yeah even if you have that binary choice even if it's limited in what i'm gonna end up doing that yeah. initial punch that initial thought that what i'm gonna do matters and Still having, in some level, repercussions. Mm. Repercussions to what my actions are, are going to carry 
farther than any story you could have pre-planned. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for some reason, I just have a certain, uh, you know, like I, I, I do take two games that are very big and and massive. You know, those big open epic world games. But there is something that usually sticks with me more with those games that have almost like smaller concentrated stories and just a series of them that lead to a larger narrative. And this does that. And, uh, and, and I liked how they actually presented it. Um, so uh, I was, uh, I had said that like, you know, if you think about like New Vegas basically being Obsidian saying, this is what we would have done with Fallout 3, uh, uh, Outer Worlds really feels like what they would have done with the Fallout 4. It feels yes. like, yeah, yeah the, the same kind of systems in place, like the, like the user improvements that they put into Fallout 4, where you don't have to go into inventories to get, to get stuff. You can, you can, mm -hmm. you know, loot boxes without going into specific screens. And all of the updates that they did, um, that stuff's present in Outer Worlds, but with better dialogue and better storytelling and scripting and um more, and and just like a, a better time dilation system it, it really felt like they were trying to show off and say yeah nice job with fallout 4 um but we, here's what we, we can got, do we got another thing we're working on <laughs> we, we've got a better idea yeah and then t uh, yeah kane and boyarski ah. come back in this I was watching a thing where Yahtzee was talking about Outer Worlds, and he, he was talking about how, like, Obsidian's just this weird... It's kind of kind of has a strange relationship with the rest of the gaming community, where, like, people come out with their games, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's super cool. Hey, uh, why huge. don't we do what you did, but way better? And, uh, hey, look at this. <laughs> like... And, on one hand... Yeah. You know, some people may see that as them trying to overly flex with something they just happen to have and trying to use existing marketing to their advantage. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, they're not a big enough company to market to the scale everyone else is. Right. So if they just go, hey, we just did that, but like more accurate to what people wanted, yeah. I'm not going to fault them for that because, no. hey, they actually just did it. The mad no. lads. No, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I always saw it as Obsidian saying, we want to prove ourselves over and over again that we can make a great game. Um, and so, like, if we're going to, you know, while, while BioWare's spending seven years to make uh, Anthem, hey, we're going to create something in a few years. <laughs> Uh, that's gonna feel a lot more like an RPG. Uh, you know, you're, you you know, uh, Bethesda comes along and says, uh, yeah, no, you guys had a great thing with Fallout, uh, but we got the brand now and we want to go to the Capital Wasteland and go to the East Coast. But you can do the sequel, and then they come back with New Vegas and go, okay, let's make the Fallout 3 we, we planned on making, but we'll do it yep. with the technology that they've built, with the creation engine, and they made New Vegas. Um, with a very short time frame and with very few resources, you know, just like we're going to make the best thing we can uh, with all the resources that we have at our disposal uh, because we, we want to create something. And, you know, you can feel that, uh, especially in Outer Worlds, like where they, they obviously cared a lot about this and the narrative and making messages that were both very obvious and also not necessarily just trying to jam a message down your throat. Like, it's there, it's definitely part of the world, but it's not supposed to be, like, uh, your your entire experience with it. It's just, hey, look at this world that we built. Kind of like in Bioshock. You know, like, y like you you understand what happened with, like, Andrew Ryan's world and and his philosophy and everything um but you're ne what you're basically seeing is the fallout from all of it you're seeing what the happens fallout? yeah yeah you see the fallout from fallout you see the fallout from like uh from rapture or columbia mm -hmm. like you you get even if the people inside of it don't necessarily realize that this is broken as hell you get the ability to see that in more of a um an organic way uh, so that they don't have to necessarily beat it over your head. They can 
they can kind of let the world show you what it is and let you decide. Um, and I, I, I did appreciate that. It's good for narrative, uh, but I would say that it definitely shares a lot more with something like a, a Bioshock or a KOTOR or even a Fable than uh, than something like like Fallout. People get that a little mixed up. Mostly because, you know, they made Fallout New Vegas, and that team also made the original Fallout. So people say, oh, it's like Fallout. But they've, they've done things besides Fallout, folks. <laughs> they made a lot of other games. So Did they really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, they did. They made Neverwinter Nights 2. They made KOTOR 2. Oh. They made... Um, true. They made uh, Pillars of Eternity. Never went to this. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah they, they made, made very fun. Yep, yep. They made Pillars of Eternity one. Two. I like Pillars of Eternity though. Yeah. <laughs> well, you like it, therefore no. you should. You should I like don't it. like Pillars of Eternity. Oh uh, well. I find well, it fuck okay. Off. Or oh, maybe good. I'm thinking of Path of Exile. One of those games. Um, they have the same exact are you sure title. You're not thinking of Divinity. I thought that we had that discussion. You you weren't a big fan of Divinity. Or Honestly, Christmas. if he dislikes Divinity, he dislikes Path of Exile. It, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I liked the story and the idea behind Divinity. I didn't like the gameplay. Uh, yeah, I can say that, like, having played Pillars and played, um, Divinity Original Sin, at least I played both of the original games, I did play, uh, Divinity 2 a little bit, um, uh, I thought that Divinity worked better in terms of gameplay than Pillars, uh, like, my, my user experience was better, um, but... You know, CRPGs are weird for me. Sometimes I get I get one in my hands. Like I think, oh God, was it Tides of Numenera? I I, I tried playing that one and I was like, yeah, <laughs> not feeling it. <laughs> like, the, I'm not really feeling it, Mr. Krabs. I'm not really feeling it, Mr. Krabs. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, was that Torment? No, that was something completely different. Um, but you know, I had I had played a few. CRPGs throughout the years where I was like, yeah, man, map markers are really a great thing. I really wish I had those right now. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the old school thing I would have really liked them to update. They could have put those things in so I could figure out what the hell I'm doing. Like, better quest markers and stuff. I really love that. You should just know what you're doing without needing those things. Yeah, I know. Um, but, like, when I played... what. what Oh, Wasteland? Was it Wasteland 2? I think it was Wasteland 2. Uh, same thing. I, it was like, you know, I had no idea what the hell I'm supposed to do. I, I, getting a little bit more clear instruction on what you're supposed to do, I think is a big... I would say that's a barrier if we're talking about classic RPG setups, like the Baldur's Gate kind of thing. Um, that would definitely be something I would appreciate an update on. Uh, now that Larian, I think, is working on Baldur's 3. Um, hey, Larian, I know that you haven't included it in previous games, but, uh, map markers. Making it real clear of where I'm going, <laughs> what I'm trying to do. That'd be great. Just a, just a random thought. <laughs> really like that for another come. Um, but, uh, but anyway, I was, uh, yeah, I, w I really liked Outer Worlds. I played through it once. I'll, I'll probably go back and play through it again. Now that I know the system better. I wanted to try doing like a high intelligence character that's totally a corporate chill, and just <laughs> play that way. Because <laughs> I was like, I mean, that. that's an interesting <laughs> thought. Yeah, I, I will say that the, the seeing the options of being the corporate chill mm -hmm. are really entertaining. Yeah, because I'm like, as a human being, I disagree with a lot of these things. Oh yeah, but as someone who could have lived here and been the Huh, profit, you say, kind of yeah. person. Yeah, I I think there's a distinct playthrough option for me. Oh yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, is that like pretty much every step of the way, siding with the corporations and getting money, and reputation, and you know discounts for the from the companies and stuff. I was like, yeah. The if you're if you're the kind of player who's like, I need all the monies and all the treasures. This that's a really good option things. for you. Be the morally corrupt person you know you can be. It in your heart. It's no, not hard. It's not hard. No. Steal, steal everything, kill everyone that disagrees with you. Uh, See, yeah. that's the problem. Everyone would agree with you if you're the corporate shill. 
that's true. Or almost everyone, because no one wants to be the non-corporate shield, because then they'll get shot by you. Yeah, yeah. I did appreciate that they didn't really have, like, a morality system, like a karma system, or a light side, dark side, or it's anything. Just, who like, likes you? Yeah, it's basically, who likes you, who doesn't like you. That's pretty much what and it and You know what? Yeah. You can please both sides by yeah. working behind the both of their backs. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like real life. Yeah, and... Sounds like Shadowrun. Yeah. But th then, the really interesting thing I thought was that companies can technically, like, organizations can both like and dislike you at the same time. You can actually get your, your, your positive and your negative feedback to 100% uh, on, on, like, uh, on certain factions. And it's great. Uh, and, and do, they, uh, do they start shooting you? You walk up to them and they go, hello there, how are you today? Uh, well, you know what? I think what happened is I was at 100% positive and negative when I was like making some kind of choice. I think I eventually went back and changed it. I was going on a shooting spree inadvertently. And it said something like... Without uh, a quick save or with a quick save? Yeah, with a, with, with a hard save. I think oh. I had done a hard save. Um... But, uh, because I was going to try something and I didn't know if it was going to work and it did not. Um, Oof. but they, um, they were up to 100% and it says something like, um, this, this, these, these people are scared of you. It's not like you're vilified or you're honored or anything exemplary. Uh, and it says something like, uh, employee is erratic and we are, we are very worried about <laughs> about them <laughs> so because that's the whole thing is that every single one of these are framed as uh like an employee review when you go into the tab <laughs> to look at <laughs> to look at how people feel about you it's always in terms of how this employee is doing <laughs> in terms of their it, company it is all framed in the sense of profitability of the individual yeah well uh, they even they even go so far as to brand the tutorials I love that. When you get menus yeah. come up and they say like this, it's always like Auntie Cleo's training tra training document or Spacer's Choice has, has noticed a flaw. Spacer's Choice firearm tra regulations yeah. or Auntie Cleo's drug habits. I mean, yeah. informational it, seminars on yeah. drugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rizzo's. Rizzo's is like one of my favorites because literally – they just try to put purple berry in everything. <laughs> Their whole product <laughs> line is just purple berries all day long. <laughs> and it's just great. Buy our product! And, 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 like, I can't remember what it was, but, like, there's, there's something that happens where, oh, yeah, it was one of the testing labs. Where they're trying to explain like what the like what the the hazardous chemical is, and they have to explain it in terms of like a Rizzo Berry product. So like it's it's Rizzo Berry Fizz Extreme is and that's the kind of color that it is now. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I think I think one of my favorite um, views into how the corporation of th th this this complete solar system of corporation has affected things was you when you go to that <coughs> there's a it's almost a side quest but it's part of the main quest where you have to explore this colony this anti-cleo secret oh yeah colony. yep uh, at one point he has discovered a two a person has just i won't tell you how this gets brought up because it's it is important, but it isn't important. Right. Um, he discovers a toothpaste that suppresses appetite. Yes. But when you read the logs between him and the company, huh. the company is stating basically there's a side effect of – there's a minor side effect of occasional blindness. <laughs> and the company basically <laughs> tells him to stop worrying about this. I understand that you're a man of principle, but listen, the marketing department can spin this in a good way. Yeah. Stop 
worrying about the fact that your toothpaste causes blindness. Yeah. It yeah. also suppresses appetite, so that's good enough for us. Yeah. And it's this sort of view into like, oh, oh, there's there's a much deeper root here. Oh like, yeah. Yeah, there's the profit is profit thing, but that's that that's that view of like no, there's there's a specific mindset here. Yeah. Well, and the thing is that it's funny because like diet toothpaste is something that they have actually like tried to sell like market people on <laughs> is is like it comes down to like you know uh there's like weight loss tips have to do with like toothpaste <laughs> and what kind of toothpaste and i wish that that was in the game it's not it's just the real world <laughs> so when so when i saw that i was like yeah that makes perfect like fit tea where people are like here's the tea that will help you lose weight and all of these things it's like yeah no they're they're always gonna try and it doesn't matter if it also you know gives you explosive diarrhea what it's going to do it makes you pee bees <laughs> but you know bees. bees somebody needs that oprah meme in the uh description i need the bees um but uh I mean, if i had it i would be a toothpaste that had uh uranium in it so you oh know, perfect it it glowed yep did it yep. close yep that's awesome that's that's a nuka cola product in the making right there yeah, there was a there was a toothpaste that had uranium because it would make your God damn you, DC, you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Radioactive Zankrim. Er sucht im Munde da tutlik Frisker. I don't speak German, therefore I don't or whatever <laughs> this is. I'll be honest, I don't know what language this is. Yeah, yeah. radioactive toothpaste. Because there was a time period where we thought radiation was totally fine so long as you didn't explode it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I it found... was just science. I found the bee gift. It was too. the word science. Yeah, exactly. You know, good, good times. Um, but... If only we trusted science that much still. Oh, that would be... Great. Yeah, <sighs> that would be just so great. Um, I should I should ask though, Paul, how far into the game are you? Because like I've finished it, so I don't want to. Um, I have gone. I done. I've done my initial launch into Groundbreaker, and I'm uh, the okay. the quest into Auntie Cleo's like secret lab base. I'm just finishing up. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got you got a ways. You got yeah, a ways. I, I've got a ways. Yeah, you got Monarch and everything to deal with. That's gonna be fun. That's that's good stuff. Um. Yeah, when you get to when you get to the end, uh you're gonna just love what the corporation what, what, what oh, the I'm director hate myself. I know this. What the what the director had as his grand plan to solve the problems of the colony <laughs> is uh, just My assumption and this is just an assumption is that it involved uh screwing everyone over for his own profit. Um, yeah, but you know what? He's gonna make it sound like he's actually <laughs> helping everybody. It's... So, it, it's it's not about the fact that it's a surprise that he's gonna screw everyone yeah. over. It's about the way he says it, that you just need to kill him for. The, one, of, one of the best, one, it, it, this, this is Obsidian all over the place, is they have a point, and it's very, very late in the game, where you find the um the public service announcement essentially that he's making to the colony and it's the outtakes and everything and where 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 it's where he's like i can't say this what are you talking about <laughs> like and coming back and like this very this very dire warning that he's doing and then he's like he's corpsing and he's like He's like laughing in the background and everything during these days. And you're sitting there like, oh yeah, you don't give a shit, do you? <laughs> this doesn't matter. One way or another. He's just, like, he's just sitting here like, these people are gonna die for this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, funny. Oh, I'm thing, still making a profit, right? The thing that is actually really great is um it's it actually feels like what they're setting up is a fate almost worse than death. Like, when you oh. get down to it. You mean capitalism? 
<laughs> it's it's I just can... it's just it when when you start to realize what what how they how they viewed this it co it totally goes back to the idea of people as a resource that you can use and tweak and move around a board for your own for your own goals uh and um and when when you actually see how they planned on on and how that wraps up even into your story you're like oh that's actually like worse <laughs> that's actually like worse oh, no. um, i I'm, I'm already sad this yeah. is going to be great but you know what the the great thing I'm is, is you don't have to go along with it. it you don't have to go along with it you're you're not obligated to oh, go along with it i would hope so this this is an rpg <laughs> i would hope i could screw someone over oh you can screw Everybody. everyone over if you wanted to that's yeah, the, exactly that's the other play through. system over <laughs> that's the other playthrough i need to do though is i i wanted to try a playthrough where i literally am just like a dumb homicidal maniac and I just kill everybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like I. I want to just be a, there's like, three a core cap. playthroughs you need to make without a worlds. Yes. Anti anti capitalist. Oh yeah. Occult scum because it's what everyone's gonna call you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute murder hobo. Yeah. And corporate shell. <laughs> I support my brand. Yeah. Because the, I enjoy money. The corporate shell one. Yeah. <laughs> But I do like the idea of being like, like almost like a a wild west gunslinger, but like the Texas Red kind of thing from from. If you so remember the song Big Iron, specifically Iron. minus out your uh, charisma and intel. Yeah, I'm... actually, that's an interesting thing about Outer Worlds. I will state is they had two. F they had your strength, dexterity, which were your melee body. weapons and your ranged weapons. Yeah, yeah, your. They body. had your. Int wisdom, quote unquote. Uh, perception. Yeah, it was int perception. and perception. Yeah. Which were your other type? Your like mind. It's mind. They actually wrap into guns world. too. Yeah, yeah your they, mind. Your mind based skills. Yeah. yeah they wrap into. Guns, and then guns, you, yeah. you had your charisma based skills. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. Your charm and your um temperament. Temperament. Yeah. yeah. Which. You could go through the whole game being dumb as rock, weak as hell. Yep. And the only problem you would have is in random bandit encounters. Yeah. But if you were dumb as rocks, couldn't yeah. wield a gun. You couldn't point a gun the right way. You could just put it all into strength. Yeah. I understand that I need to walk from here to there and they're going to be bandits. But I got a stick and no bandit survives my stick. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. that that is a camp but for some reason everyone goes, I like this guy. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, if you get like the rearranger or something, one of the science weapons, that stick actually seems to <laughs> to end up being really good. <laughs> Like I never, like I never really ended up using the science weapons because they didn't really do as much you know, effective damage as a lot of the other things. But if you have like the the mandible rearranger or something, it was actually a glitch in the game that they decided to turn into the weapon where when you hit people with it, it literally rearranges stuff on their face. <laughs> 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 it was one of the science weapons. They have the science weapons are awesome. The shrink ray. They, it's just literally you sh literally you so, shoot the sh shrink ray at an enemy and the enemy gets smaller. <laughs> so that is how shrink rays this, work. Yes. It, it is in fact how they work. Yeah. Uh, the shrink ray though has saved me on one occasion so far because I went that's a dangerous thing. Shrink Oh, it yeah. does a lot less damage now. Yeah, it really. Hey, you know what? It it does prove very effective. One of what what was the one? I eventually just gave my science weapons to my companions because I was like, yeah, you'll get use out of it. I gave Parvati the gloop gun. The gloop oh, no. gun is amazing. <laughs> it just it just fires like an electrified puddle on the ground and when p and when enemies are in it they like get lifted up into the air and suspended in animation for a while so so i just gave it to her and, and she fires it and then all of a sudden i see these like enemies just floating motionless in the air and i'm like the easy pickings let's just take care of those right now 
Um, yeah, they have they have some great the mind ray. That's another one you can use. They have the. the I the, I'm now far too excited to find more of the science weapons. Oh yes. Just to see the terrible things I can do. Oh with this. yes. There's um uh. <laughs> What the mind ray is on the uh, on Scylla. I'm trying to think what. The... Oh no, the mandible rearranger is on Scylla. Um, I didn't, I didn't get the mind ray for a long time. And um, shrink ray. Oh, uh, then there's also the. Um, I don't actually know what it does. I think it. I think it just launches people into the air. But the like the two-handed heavy weapon is actually on Groundbreaker. You can find that on Groundbreaker. Uh, it's, it's, um, oh, no. it's on, um, yeah, there's like, there's like a hidden crawl space kind of close to the, uh, beginning of Groundbreaker. You can kind of like get up, up above and like go into the, like, <laughs> kind of get behind to one of the, the secret dock things. And there's just some bandits there and they're, they're protecting this giant, the prismatic hammer. <laughs> and, um. And so uh, that's how I and I stumbled across that. I had no idea that it was actually there. Um, uh, and I'm trying to think. I'm gonna look it up because I want to know uh, what it does. Um, oh, you you only need to have completed Stranger in a Strange Land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it doesn't really have anything uh, specific. You just have to be able to make it to Groundbreaker to actually get that. Um, and honestly, I don't think I ever actually used it, but, oh, oh, the prismatic hammer can hit multiple targets at once. Oh, that's handy. I didn't know you could do that. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> totally doing that. Yeah, I, the, the in, I think the most interesting thing about the science weapons is they do have this element of, we wanted to do this. Yeah. Like, no, they're not, they, they end up surprisingly being very well balanced in the mm. game even though they're a bit above and beyond yeah but they're this sort of just eh, we wanted to do this and put it in the game because it's weird yeah i think that those it, the, it was their it was their ability to say hey uh we came up with some really strange things and uh figured that we'd just throw them in as like special weapon the interesting thing though is that those are all dependent on literally one of your mind skills because it's all science so so really it's like things like your intelligence that actually determine how effective they are <laughs> in the field hey you that weird dude with weird guns yeah. you gotta be smarto the the thing that <laughs> The thing that really, uh, I think prevented me from going all in on them, uh, because I would, like, I would say, like, if, if, if I wanted to, I would, like, do all science weapons all the time, but they all use the same kind of, uh, of, uh, ammunition. They all use energy ammunition, uh, and so, not that I had a problem finding it. I had plenty of ammo, but I figured that, like, it didn't really make sense for me to have, like, four energy weapons, three energy weapons, four, whatever. Um, uh, and, and realistically, my, like, my machine gun turret thing that's electrified that, that will destroy robots instantaneously was also pretty great. And I'm kind of happy that I have that. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a, j just a lot of interesting things in it, uh, so uh, yeah. But I'm uh, I'm trying out a few other things since I have my game pass. Uh, I figured out I I look at some other things, tried them out, tried Snake Pass for five seconds, and I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nah. But uh, the one I do have to try, uh, hopefully I'll by the time we get. Uh, back and do another one of these i will have tried it and see is outer wilds uh which i heard really good things about uh not outer worlds but outer wilds which is like a um kind of a puzzle game that's set in outer space uh between different planets in a solar system but it is in a continual time loop so, Perfect. so the idea, and people, people have said this game is amazing. It, it, they think that it's up for game of the year. 
uh, because every 20 minutes or so, everything resets uh, on you. Yes. 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 Yeah. It, I, I need to play that a few times because yeah. just on a conceptual level, mm -hmm. that is a fun, weird thing where it's not like – it's not a matter of what can you finish in this. It's not a matter of finishing the game. It's a matter of what can you find. Yeah. What can you actually do? And, like, I, I guess there is a resolution. You just – you have to – go through this pattern many times to find out what happens. Um, it kind of reminds me, there was another small game called Minute uh, that kind of takes that, and actually I can play that too, that's also on Game Pass, um, where literally everything resets inside of a minute. Uh, but mm -hmm. some things that you do will not reset. So you might be able to unlock doors or something like that in that one minute, and so when you reset, those doors are now unlocked and you can get further. And I was like, it's an interesting conceptual idea. Um, I, uh, I, I, I need to actually see it in practice to see how that works. But I'd, I'd really be interested to see, like, a role-playing... Oh, no, I don't need to. I've already seen it. Never mind. <laughs> I played a game. Once upon a time, that was uh, sort of like a dungeon crawler. It was called Baroque. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, it's one of the worst uh -huh. games I've ever played. Um, <laughs> that's I, I, I that's can, an endorsement. Yeah, it was one of it was one of the worst games I had ever played, and uh, I will I will more than happily try to find it so that I can link to it so that you can see what it is. Um, I don't remember what the studio was that made... Oh, it was Atlas. That's right. <laughs> it was an Atlas yes. game. Um, I guess they shrugged. Yeah, it was... Atlas did indeed shrug by Sting Entertainment. Thank you very much. This was back during the PlayStation 2 era, the Wii and everything. Um, so, Baroque was basically an idea. You're doing a dungeon crawl, right? And you can gain levels and you can do all that stuff while you're in that dungeon crawl. You start with one dungeon that's like a few levels uh, deep. Th this this game had me uh, hating it from the beginning because the guy who trains you constantly says, "Hit the thing, god damn it! Do this, god damn it! Why don't make make sure that you hit the enemy on the head, god damn it!" Like every sentence so, he had to oh end no, by it, screaming, it's this "God!" Sort of yeah. Do better. Do. better. Better. Yeah, it's. I know like, I'm the tutorial person, but I'm yeah. sarcastically annoyed. Yeah. Um. And uh, uh, it is just one of those weird games where. Okay. So here's. So here's the main mechanic of Baroque. Baroque basically was like, here's a starting dungeon. You go down and you go through like three or four levels of this dungeon, and then you get to the bottom, and there's a cutscene that shows you, uh, like, somebody who says like, you shouldn't be here, and all of a sudden. Uh, you're back in the main town. All your levels are gone. All your equipment is gone. You're basically back to the start. Okay, let's go through another dungeon. This dungeon's larger now. Okay, start getting your levels back. Start getting your equipment back. Oh, you completed that? Okay, back to the start. You get a new cutscene, and, uh, okay, you lose all your equipment. You lose all of your levels. So it's like a roguelike, but instead of dying, as soon as you finish yeah, the dungeon, you succeed, you the and they still take all your stuff away. <laughs> See, I don't mind that. But instead of things changing to make things easier or having new plans, it just makes things worse. Yeah, and longer. It just kind See, of I don't mind if they do something like that, but every time you restart, if you've succeeded, you get, like, a bonus ability or something, nope. like, given to you. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, uh, you would not like this game. <laughs> you, this, this you is really... not... Oh, you did great! Yeah. Fuck you! Yeah, because the because the thing about it is, is that, like, there was, there was points where, like, if you're in those dungeons, you could use some of the currency that you got to potentially, like, save something if you were to die or or win what <laughs> whatever caused you to lose levels like maybe you get to save an object for this one turn or something like that if, if it goes back around but it was just such a like it was just such an endless cycle of god damn it now i gotta go through an even bigger damn dungeon and start back at scratch and it was like it was like 
um, Dark Souls, but with, like, no progress like whatsoever. <laughs> like, there was yeah, no keep... incentive for me to keep going. <laughs> and In Instead of having the the weird meta effect of your persistence is actually a world building effect where only the strongest of willed survive and become those who need to finish the game with a sort of in-game reaction to those who give up on the game it's just no fuck you stop trying yeah yeah this th <laughs> let, let, let me uh, uh, from the wikipedia page this is how this is the first paragraph that explains the setting and characters of baroque okay Set after a world-altering cataclysm called The Blaze that took place on May 14th, 2032, Baroque focuses on a nameless, mute, and amnesiac, amnesiac protagonist. Early on, he finds himself tasked with purifying the meta-beings, once human creatures that have lost themselves to the delusions inside them, and reaching the bottom floor of a tower to gain redemption for his forgotten sin. Through his interactions with the other characters and unlock cutscenes, the player learns about the backstory and characters. I can tell you, you don't care about the backstory. You don't care about these characters. If I could have Outer World at this and kill off all the NPCs, I would have done so <laughs> immediately. They're the most annoying people on the planet. I don't want to know about them, and I certainly don't want to lose all my progress every time I win <laughs> to find out more about them. Baroque is, is one of the worst games I ever played. Um, it, it didn't play well. I didn't enjoy myself. I kind of hated the experience altogether. And, um, and its mechanic sucked. <laughs> it's like base mechanic that it tried to talk about. Like how innovative this is. Sucked. <laughs> so yeah. That's, I mean, I didn't get to play, like, some of the truly horrible games, like a, a Superman 64 or a, or a Drake of the 99 Dragons. I didn't get to play those, but this is one I did play, and I regret it every day. <laughs> um, Whoop, I did that. Every day. I regret that particular release back in 98. And uh, please never make a reissue. When, when, they, when they make a reissue of Baroque, I know that they are officially out of ideas. They have... Or, or yeah. they're specifically targeting you. They just want me to suffer. Um, you I just, and four other people. It's one... <sighs> Atlas is just one of those uh, game studios where I don't... I just don't think that they speak to me. <laughs> In general, like, I know that they make some good series, and I'd probably enjoy a few of them. I've probably played some that I did enjoy, but they have a tendency to make far more that I don't like. Um, and, uh, or at least publish more that I don't like. Um, I mean, they did, they did make, like, the Persona series, and I haven't gotten a chance to play any of them, but I did hear that those are quite nice. Or, oh, Shin Megami Tensei. Well, okay. Good, good for you, um, I, I, I suppose. But um, yeah. Then they had some real other difficult. Oh, they also made Trauma Center. Well, you know, it's a. It's a <laughs> oh, and Snowboard Kids. Good for you. You made Snowboard Kids. Ed, ed Tactics Ogre. <laughs> That's yeah. Anyway, like I said, kind of a mixed bag for a company. Like, uh, per Persona, I actually, I'd really love to play some per uh, Persona. I just never had the right system. Um, I did play a little of Disgaea. Uh, they made Disgaea also? Yes. They did the localization for Disgaea in the United States. Uh, they, oh, okay. Nipponichi actually created Disgaea. But uh, they they gotcha, gotcha. they brought it over to the United States. They essentially did the porting over. Um, gotcha. And Disgaea is, it's fine. It's just it was not my cup of tea. <laughs> I I thought that it was an interesting idea. Um, oh, we're just evil out of the gate. Okay, that's cool. I I 
I kind of, I kind of like the oh, oh, we're just the bad guys. We're starting as bad guys. Good, let's go. Okay, Keep Leroy. Let's just yeah, Leroy. Leroy. Jenkins. It's sort of, sort of like in the same way that like Overlord. Overlord just revels in the fact that you're just the bad guy from the start, and the people that you have to fight are the traditionally good guys. The the knights you're here and the to royalties. Win. Yeah. Uh, I do miss Overlord, though. <laughs> it was a, that was a fun series. <laughs> Just get my minions to attack. <laughs> it was a, you know, there's something interesting about a game that goes, no, we're not heroes. We're the bad guys, dumbass. It's... Go beat the baby seals to death and then send your minions to do it and take over the world like you're meant to. Because yeah. it does two yeah. things. It one is a very interesting, cathartic, weird, rope bending personality. It's also a great filter for finding the people who actually want to do that and going, "No, I'm not. I'm not hanging out with you anymore." Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, yes, we are the baddies. Yeah, we are. We are definitely. We have skulls baddies. on our heads for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> that that sketch is so great. I love it. So I love much. it. I mean. Did you notice that we have skulls on our emblem right now? <laughs> did, no, no, no. did anyone know that? <laughs> oh dear, just... uh, the best part of that to me is just the, the apprehensiveness of the other guy going, shit, you're right. I don't want to admit that. <laughs> um, the bad, why would you say that? Well, we got skulls on our <laughs> Or they're just trying to rationalize like, Oh damn it! <laughs> I think we might actually be the bad guys here. Yeah. No. I think, no. I think I done fucked up. I mean, I don't know. If the if a game gives you uh an if if a game literally just right out of the bat has to tell <laughs> you, like you're not really playing on an RPG where you get to do light side dark side, but they tell you right out of the gate, okay, you're either the good guys or the bad guys. Which one would you actually prefer? I prefer they wouldn't tell me, and I had to come to the conclusion slowly that I'm the bad guy over time. That's why I that, said that if they the time. if they did tell you up at the front, which one would you prefer? I'd like them to to mislead me. Oh, so, uh, you you like that? Okay. You want to yeah. be the so okay. It's like, so in the it's like wait, morally <laughs> ambiguous, and then it's like wait a second, wait a second. Oh shit. Fuck, no, we're the bad guys. Game lied. It's all a matter of perspective. Shit. <laughs> yeah. That, that is wonderfully interesting. Um, I will state, I have an opi two opinions. If the game doesn't tell me what's right or wrong, I tend to go with the right, be the, the kind of being a good person to people, because that's who I am. Hello, little one. Um, sorry, puppy went by, and therefore he needed pets. Um, yes. The, but if the game tells me what's right and wrong, I almost always go evil. And because I'll be honest, ninety mm -hmm. percent of the time when the game goes, there's evil powers and there's good powers. The evil powers are way better. Yeah, that's because they're more fun. Because they don't give no shits. It's like you can heal everyone. You can heal all the NPCs in a twenty foot radius of you, or you can steal all their life essence and blast it into the enemy with cool lightning effects. I'm like, oh, I want the cool lightning yeah. effects. It's true. I mean, the dark side was pretty great. We should, we should, we should embrace it. Um, okay. I won't embrace the dark side, but I will embrace the dark side. Yeah. Okay, so I kind of like that idea. So if, if they make it sound like they're imposing a moral imperative on you, you want to kind of be evil. Because I want to see what the hell they mean by evil. And yeah. also, they really, really want to make a... Almost every time, they want to make a point of it. Yeah. So they go, humans are necessarily evil. Right. That's why we put the cooler options as evil, so that to show our point. It's like... Yeah. We're playing a video game. Right. This is not an actual reflection of my opinions. Yeah. If you gave me a choice... Without any sort of implication on my morality meter, Mr. Infamous. Yeah. I would. Pr yes, I'm calling out Infamous. Yes. Uh, I would probably <laughs> go with being a good person because I'm. I don't want to be an evil person. I don't. 
personally intend to take people's life. Right. But if you gave me the option, if you're telling me there's an evil path and there's a good path, I'm going to take the evil path because you gave me some really cool shit. Yeah. What right. are you eating? I Everything. I'm sorry. I turned over to a... Stop eating the desk. <laughs> sorry. He took the I evil path. <laughs> yeah, he, no, he's taking the chaotic path. It's oh, a very different. It's chaotic. <laughs> it's good. A different, big difference it's here. The chaotic good, yeah. Um, but like, yeah, if they don't give me a specific choice, I do have a tendency to say I'm gonna try to be the good guy here. But then if I go back, I'm like, oh, armed with knowledge, I'm going to see how much of an asshole I can be now. <laughs> like, exactly. That's usually my because second playthrough, yeah. You put in an interesting story for me. I want to see where you went with it. Right? Yeah, it's like, but what happens if I went down the other path here? I'm kind of curious. Um, And it does feel like, you know, once you actually understand how a game runs... And you kind of get the ins and outs of it. You want to see how far you can push it <laughs> to, to see exactly what you can do and and uh, and how that actually works. I think that that's where, like, when they said in Outer Worlds, where basically all except for like the one character, which I'm guessing is is uh, Doctor Wells, um, you can literally just kill every NPC. Like, you you could just go through and just wholesale kill everybody, but you would be able to still complete the game. I imagine that there'd be a lot of areas of the game you couldn't get to, because a lot of them are locked behind certain quest lines. But you could complete the game. Apparently, you could complete the game. Uh, if, even, even if you are just the bringer of death. You're the Grim Reaper. Uh, and, uh... Listen, you can kill everyone. So long as the game ends, you win. Yeah. And also, uh, the game is particularly short. I can definitely see that. Okay. Where, the game, where the game is short. It's kind of funny, too, because, like, when I, I find... I think I find that I, I take more violent options or, like, more immediate actions once I know how the game plays. Because, like, I started playing, um... Uh... What did I just pick up? Oh, I, I started playing a little New Vegas the other day. Again, and um, and what I started to realize is, uh, knowing the story and knowing the characters, when I get to Nipton, uh, I don't even bother Bang. talking. Uh, yeah, I don't even bother talking to Volpus. And in, there in you are. In fact, <laughs> this time, this time I got super smart. I happened to have a few frag mines in my inventory. And before they could run up to me, I, like, chuck those down on the ground and move backwards. And I was also smart enough that I was like, okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to have a high repair skill and then a high uh, science skill at the front. So I could already repair Edie. So I already had Edie with me Civilians, at the start. I think you mean acceptable losses. Yes. Yes. I had, I had, I had Edie with me. So I was like, okay, this is good because now I just have a floating laser drone with me. But I just, I, I stepped back, and then I just, like, aim down the sights of my gut, and I just shoot Vulpus once, and then you see every, all of them just run at me, and I just equip the, um, the, <laughs> the dynamite I have in my inventory, and I start chucking it at them. <laughs> hey, friendo, you know when that, that time you shot me in the face? You know what happens when you shoot someone in the face? They get mad. Yeah, and boy, they boy did they. And I just really loved the fact that, like, before I could really even do anything, they run into the mines, and, like, half the Legion just comes up. <laughs> and, then just, and then the rest of them go and attack Edie, so I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna just deal with this. Because Edie's just going to be unconscious and come back after this whole thing. So just, yeah, go attack. It's fine. Everything's good. And and just just wholesale. <laughs> just do that. I didn't have to waste much ammo. I was like, okay, yeah, these, these, <laughs> these explosives are just burning a hole in my pocket. Oh, let me just go take care of that. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, so I was like, yeah, screw it. I'm not even going to talk to the Legion. I did that at uh, Good Springs, too, is when Joe Cobb is talking to Trudy. Like... Like, before he can even engage me in conversation, attacking Joe Cobb, kill, <laughs> yep, taking him down right now, because I don't want to have to deal with him later when I need to defend the town. 
You're down. It's this sort of like, I I know where this is going. Yeah. I can, I can see the future. Yeah, I can see the future because I've done this you, before. Why'd you shoot Jimmy in the in the the hip? Yeah. Well, because if he has, if he's dead, it's a bad thing. He actually ends up being poor for. But if yes. he's alive, and fully able to carry everything, he'll actually carry weapons to our enemies. But being disabled, he's actually a moral backbone for your community. Yeah. And therefore, what I did was right. Yeah. It's what the fuck? It's it's that thing where you suddenly see all like one billion it's it's like the flash hook gets hooked up and can see all billion outcomes to what happens. You are Doctor Strange. You're Doctor Strange. You, out of out of the fourteen million outcomes or whatever, this is the one. And uh and yeah, so now like having played throughout our worlds and knowing like where the narrative goes and what happens with the characters uh yeah i was like okay i know how this would run if i was doing this again i think that i could have shaved a lot of time off if i knew what to do actually they uh well, they had someone do a speed more... run and oh, no. um the 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 guy <laughs> who did a speed run uh was just able to shave like 10 minutes off of his time but he can now do it in about 25 minutes you can finish outer worlds <laughs> Be, 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 okay. Yeah. Is the the full investment into guns? Uh, I don't know if it's into guns so much as it is that you have to sell wells out to the board like immediately. Oh yeah, that's an option. I mm. forgot about that. Mm. That gives you. Oh, yeah, I. Th that, that guy that... just ru rubbed me exactly the wrong way. Where I went. Nope, nope, nope. You're a creep. You're weird, and you're gonna sell me out to any for any piece of profit you can. I don't like you. Go away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Please leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Um. Wells. Wells. You can sell out to the board immediately, and um, that gives you access to. I think it's Byzantium early. Uh. Huh. And so. Uh. Yeah. I think that that really does cut down your time, because <laughs> you can buy yeah, most do of it. the game. I mean, what what eventually happens is you you don't go to like most of the game, but you you go to like two locations or something like that, and and then uh, it's just that last section. I guess you just you just burn through that as fast as you possibly can. I guess if you go through those main quest lines too, they give you a lot of XP, so you can probably level up super super quick. Uh, it, it, you're not going to be a high level, but you're going to be. You're gonna gain a, quite a few levels pretty quick if you do that. Yeah. yeah, I won't be level thirty, but even if I'm level ten, and I've just specialized into like shooting things, I could probably make this work. Um, yeah, but no, apparently that's that's what the speed. Of course, I've seen literally. I watched a speed run of this guy who completed New Vegas in fifteen minutes. Why though? <laughs> Just to say that he did. I don't under. I don't. Wait. How, guess. <laughs> completed. How many minutes? Fifteen. Fifteen minutes. Okay, I heard three for some reason. Oh, okay. Fifteen. No, not three. But you may you may ask yourself, how do you even get across the map? There's actually like a glitch that he exploited where. Uh, so something like if you're aiming and then you open and you close your pip boy, it like jumps your character ahead faster than you could ever like run. So, so if you keep doing that, you can actually get to New Vegas in just like a minute and a half or something from Good Springs. Just <laughs> and then you just pull out your gun and shoot. Well, basically, what you do at that point is you just do the Yes Man quest and just go and like. You just go and kill house, and then you just you whip around and just meet everybody, and don't do any of their quest lines. You just meet them, meet them, meet them, meet them, meet them. Okay, yeah, I've met everybody. Good. Now let's go to Hoover Dam, and then you just <laughs> you just go to Hoover Dam. You just you just whip through that without trying to actually you know uh, kill anybody. You just you just try to speed run as fast as you can past Whew. all of that, and then you've you've put all your points into speech. 
so that when Lanius comes up to you and's like, hey, I don't like you, you're like, no, fuck you, and and he runs off, and uh, <laughs> hey, and boom, you're done, you're done. Congratulations, you oh, just want to do Vegas now. Which I guess if you're doing like on hardcore mode and you want the achievement, go for it. <laughs> it's a, it's a, that's an easy 100, 100 achievement points, right? There, there you if go. You, if, you, if you're an achievement hunter. Yep. <laughs> if you're an achievement hunter, that's a gold. Uh, that's a gold trophy right there. Yeah, there you go. Yep. But um, you can do it, it, you it's one of those things. Like, I will say, going back to Outer Worlds, the fact that there is a back dodge, which I almost never use. No, I do. Yeah. Occasionally, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I can do this. Nope. Yeah. And I remember that specifically. Yeah. I'm like, how did they not how do they have that as a not glitch? Because ninety percent of the speed runs I've ever seen mm -hmm. involve face your camera forward and dodge and jump backwards at some point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like your camera's facing this way, so it doesn't properly render the wall, so you go backwards. So mm -hmm. how the hell did they bug test enough to trust yeah. that? Yeah. Um they they have that. Then you can unlock a front dodge too if you invest enough points into the defense skills. Yeah. And then you can actually do a forward or what they call a leap. Although I really found that kind of unnecessary altogether. <laughs> I I I realized that that was actually there wasn't anything I couldn't reach without just regular platforming, Mario jumping around. Um, uh, <coughs> sorry to interrupt. I, I need sure. to get going. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I'm glad yeah. Game Hole Con went really well for you, though. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'll do my standard. All opinions are my own, and I got to make a weird archaic reference to toothpaste. So yeah. <laughs> so you know what? All things considered, this went very well. All right, DC. Good to, good to have you back. All right, talk to you later. All right, we'll see you. Um, yeah, I, uh, what was the other speed run that I was watching not too long ago? Oh, right, they were talking about, um, a actually, Alex, you probably would, would know about this, because they were talking about it on Game Theory. Um, there was a speed run that they were doing for Resident Evil 4, and, um, the way that this guy was able to get past one of the big boss battles was he actually died a couple times. Because the, oh, rubber, yes. the rubber band AI, when you die, starts to take away obstacles from yep. your path. So, yep, yep. so uh, what was it? It was like the there's, there's supposed to be snipers that are like hitting you with stuff up on the upper platforms that you have to take care of too. But if you die a couple times, they're just gone. And so before you know it, you're only down to like a couple people that you have to deal with. Yeah, and a certain run there's like archers or something up there, and if you keep dying, it, it does. It lowers the difficulty for you. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you utilize that by dying several times, yeah, and then because it makes that. it super easy. Yeah, because as they explain to you, uh, no, no, uh, you don't need to, you, you, games don't need to get easier. You need to get better. <laughs> because, because the game actually usually will rubber band a lot of those mechanics to make it easier for you. Um, uh, there's, there's a lot of times where the, they don't tell you that in the game, but, uh... Of course they don't, because it would break the idea that you're doing well. Yeah, a lot yeah. of games, uh, um, Game Maker's Toolkit goes into the fact that a lot of games, like, that last point of HP that you have is, like, worth more than, like, oh, yeah. the last ten points of HP you have. Yeah, they talked to, uh, they, they had thrown out this, uh, thing. Man, I wish I could find that thread, but... There was a game designer that actually was like, uh, just in invited his other game designers. Hey, tell me something like interesting that you put into the game, the the game mechanics, the actual code that people might not know about. And one of the devs for Assassin's Creed had talked about how, yeah, that last block of your health bar actually counts for far more than you think it does, uh, but it's there to give you a sense of urgency. 
Uh, so you uh, know it yep. does it does count for more, but it does put you into a state where you're really really concerned for your health all of a sudden. Um, there was that. The other the other one I found kind of interesting is that they were talking to one of the devs that was doing uh, Alien Isolation, and they were talking about how they actually created two different AI systems for the alien's uh, feet, their its movement and its head. So it's it's a head trying to actually um, like register information and sensory perception was on like one artificial reality system was on, on one kind of AI system, but then its movement itself was on like another different AI system. So you could figure out how to try and manipulate uh, both how it was perceiving information and also how it moved inside of the environment. Which might be why it felt kind of realistic when when people were playing it and very spooky. Maybe. Or why it might feel unrealistic because it's a xenomorph and therefore not human. So it was maybe. functioning differently. I mean, maybe. You could. I mean, maybe. Possibly. Quite possibly. I'm not going to play yeah. Isolation because I don't want to be scared. <laughs> I I don't play scary scared. games. Play more scary games with sharks in them. Nope. I don't do sharks in games. All That's... the shark games. Nope, I'm not doing sharks. It's why it's why I don't want to play Sea of Thieves. <laughs> I don't care really? for cartoon sharks. Screw that. Nope, not going to play Sea of Thieves. It's just all sharks all the I, time. I got bored of the Sea of Thieves because the sharks were the most threatening thing. Oh, yeah. Like... They're skeletons. Okay, that's it. They have specific weaknesses. Okay, that means I can just go water dead, dead, dead. Yeah. Explosives dead, dead, dead. Oh, here's a skeleton. I mean, yeah. that they're wearing bling. Good, good for you. But it it became a problem when uh, I was playing with friends, and I just went, "That's an island, right? Yep. That's where our treasure is. Yep. Just." Just sail close to it and let me shoot myself. Once you get there, I'll have the treasure. Are you sure? <laughs> I guess. Guess so. Yep. Yep. I um. I I like. I probably wouldn't play Sea of Thieves just in general. But I mean, the sharks are definitely like a big deal for me. I don't do that. I try to avoid them in games even that have the sharks. Like, I was able to avoid having a shark encounter by uh, playing Odyssey and also Far Cry 3. Like, I, I purposely made sure that I was not going to encounter sharks. Um, but, uh, but I know that it's kind of unavoidable in Sea of Thieves. No, my big problem with Sea of Thieves, though, was, um, what is happening with Rare lately, man? I, <laughs> like... Oh man, that's a sad story. I remember mm -hmm. when Rare was like the pinnacle of game design. What happened? I They got bought by Microsoft. They got bought They got bought by Microsoft. I just I remember them from like N64 era when they were making like the greatest games of all time. They were, they were making the GoldenEye and the Perfect Dark. And the Banjo Kazooie and Conquer and Donkey Kong 64, and and then Microsoft bought them, and the first game that they came out with was grabbed by the Ghoulies, and I was like, oh, well, this went downhill fast. <laughs> well, it's when your team is, has a very interesting set of creative minds. Mm. Well, they'll do weird things. Yes, yeah. they will. They'll not all work, but hey. You, yeah. you only push out what kind of works, and you, and, yeah. and then there's like, there's someone at the top that goes, "All right, that's cool." Yeah. But uh, I don't care that your team spent a year developing something that was useless that two, seven years later actually became something useful. Yeah. You're only allowed mm. to make something that's gonna do profit. Yeah, I think that the funny thing is, is that like. Rare was a profitable studio. Like, they had made some really, like, profitable games. But it's weird, like... A part of me feels like it was Microsoft saying, we need new IPs. 
because now you're part of, of Microsoft, so we need something like that's going to be really ours, you know, not your previous work. And I, I understand Rare had, like, they couldn't do, obviously, a Donkey Kong game because they weren't working for Nintendo. So they couldn't make another Donkey Kong 64, and they probably had some licensing problems with some of the other things that they were making. Um, GoldenEye might have been tricky because they didn't have the license for it anymore. But they, I, I wouldn't have necessarily thrown the baby out of, with the bathwater. Like, anything that they did have that were existing properties, they could have played around with. But I think they wanted a... Um, Grab by the Ghoulies was supposed to be more of a game that was geared toward children. Um, but they really should have just let Rare do what Rare did. Then they followed that up with, like, cameo elements of power, which I've played, and I can, I can tell you it's not their finest moment, um, because it is technically a platformer, but it doesn't... The controls don't work. Like, it's just the weirdest thing where, like, they were so gun ho of like, ooh, look at these new, like, triggers that they have on the controller for the Xbox. Isn't it fun they have these little controllers that they wanted every one of Cameo's uh, elemental forms to function primarily by, by, by pressing the triggers. Like, like, oh, you're a snowball. Okay, well, if you want to roll in the snowball, you gotta press this trigger. Uh, okay, if you want to bounce, you gotta press this trigger. Could I, could I press some face buttons? Like, I'm used to pressing face buttons for this stuff. Or, or could, could, could it do that? No. They all function differently. They just... And then they eventually did come with ba back with the Banjo-Kazooie, but it was a completely different game than the Banjo-Kazooie they had made. <laughs> let's, let's have them build stuff. That's also fun. I, actually, it was kind of fun. That was kind of fun. I'll admit. But I was uh I, I was just really hoping that one day Rare would get back into form and um and, and produce the kind of games that I, I used to like from them. And I still haven't seen those. So and uh I, I like no man, uh, no man see. Yeah, Nathan. No, it's, it's Sea of Thieves. It is no man see. It is no man see. Yeah. Um, it's a pirate sea for me. And ironically, that dev cycle worked very well, very similar to No Man's Sky. Oh, we created this vast open nothingness. I guess we have to populate it with stuff now. <laughs> Which is why Hello Games comes back and it's like, oh, we need to make some big updates here. Because there's not a lot of meat on the bones <laughs> for this game. It's like, no, there really isn't. You need a lot more. Uh, and it is not enjoyable. Um, also kind of broken, my experience with No Man's Sky. Uh, I could keep selling my ship over and over again, but then just reclaiming my ship over and over again. You don't need uh, no ship. Yeah. Oh, uh, but uh, hey, you know what? I had a full stable of like six ships in like no time, and I hardly had to pay anything for it. <laughs> I had some nice ships by the end. It was it was some nice ship. Oh, I had some nice. Ba well, what I what I happened to come across on the first planet, I decided this is how I'm gonna spend my time. I uh, I I went to a distress signal, and it was this giant freighter. And so the idea is probably, hey, you know what you can do is you can get some parts off the freighter. And I was like, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fix up all the essential systems. And I'm going to pilot this bad boy off this rock. <laughs> so I got all the necessary materials I needed. And I popped them in. And I sailed this giant cargo boat. Basically, it was Red Dwarf. I basically found Red <laughs> Dwarf on this planet, starting planet, and I, I well took done. it up to a spaceship, and uh, I took it up to one of the space stations, and, um, like, it's it's barely usable, but it's it's flying. Uh, most of its main systems are not in, in critical condition and everything. They're not great, um, but it's now worth a lot of money because it's a giant-ass ship. 
And so I kept trading people, like, would you trade your ship for my ship? And I would, like, my ship was worth more, so I didn't have to pay them any money for theirs. And they had ones that were maybe smaller, but they were complete, and they had better s weapons and stuff, and, and unlocked cargo space and stuff like that. So I'm like, so oh, yeah. So then you blow up the ship that you just gave them? Is that what <laughs> no, this is what I did. I got their ship, so now that's my ship. But the, my current ship, my Red Dwarf ship, is still docked in the bay. And technically, the game hasn't assigned ownership to it to somebody else while it's still there. So I just went back over to it and said, would you like to own the ship? Yep. And I went back and I re <laughs> re-owned my ship for no money. Then I went up to another, then I saw another ship come in and I'm like, oh, I like that. Hey, yeah. would you like to buy this ship? That's my, that's my ship. And they were like, yeah, of course I would. That would be great. And so I did it again. And my old ship is still docked there. I go back over to it. Would you like to own the ship? Yep. <laughs> and so I did that like five times until I couldn't buy any ships anymore. And uh, yeah, I had all the ships. <laughs> and I, so and I still nice had my old ship. I still had my old ship. So... That was, that's something I've heard about where it's this weird, weird, I don't want to call it a glitch, but it's, but it is kind of a it's an exploit. weird thing where you can just go, hmm. eh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. I'm just going to sell you this ship seven times. Yeah, I'll just keep selling you the ship. Because I can't technically make a profit off of any of these ships, but I, I, I can absolutely keep getting really good ships. That are like top class ships, and uh, I don't have to pay anything for it, so I'll take it. Um, and then it's just a matter of like, oh god, which ship is actually the best <laughs> for this? What has the best stuff? Um, but yeah, no, there were s there were definitely a few problems with it. Uh, I was lucky enough that I didn't actually play it until Next had come out, so there was at least some more feature rich stuff in it. Um, but uh, but I. I didn't really stick around to see what happened with, like... Oh, no, I guess I was playing when the Abyss came out, so I saw a little bit of what that was. But then I started to worry that there might be sharks, so I stopped uh, playing. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Because they were trying to explain what the underwater part of the, the game was. And it's like, I don't really need you to do that. Because I'll probably come across a computer-generated shark. And it's going to... <laughs> it's gonna suck. No, no, that that won't happen. I swear. Yeah, no, it absolutely will. Um, and ironically, I did play quite a bit of Subnautica, <laughs> which you would think would be terrible for me if I don't like sharks. But they All don't. The sharks. But they don't really have sharks so much. They have alien life forms that live underwater, and they were alien cool. sharks. Um, some things that are called those, sharks. But how do you distinguish those? Um, well, they had the, what? What are they called? Um, sand sharks. I think they had them called sand sharks. But sand sharks really don't look anything like a um a shark. Like you, like they don't have creatures in that world that really look like a a shark. So I was like, okay, I can kind of accept this. Plus, they actually gave you ways to defend yourself underwater, um, which which actually work for the most part. Uh, I, I, they they did a they did a nice job with the game. I think is the best thing I can say about it. <laughs> like uh, for the for the size of the team that they had, they made like they didn't even computer generate this shit. They like they crafted that whole underwater landscape um they like actually placed stuff there are certain areas and realms uh to create what was uh, supposed to be essentially a horror survival game but underwater uh but they had neat systems that and is stuff. horror then it's just horror. a lot of people underwater is horror yeah 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 i think that was the whole idea especially because some of that water is really dark and um and it actually had a day-night cycle, so if you went underwater during the nighttime, you couldn't see very much of anything. And uh, there, 
The creatures, some of them had bioluminescence, so the whole underwater landscape looked completely different when you went under at night. But you could also do base building and stuff, which was kind of neat. So you could build, like, little ships and things. But, uh, that required a lot of collection, and I did not want to do that. It's, it's when games ask you to, uh, let's build a whole bunch of stuff but it's going to require a ton of parts for you to build them that I kind of tune out and I don't want to engage with those systems anymore. Among because all the stuff you can make, uh, that, sounds, that sounds very dull and like a lot of effort and not quite in the vein of stuff I want to do. Yeah, but look at all the stuff you can make. Hmm. Yeah, see, that was the problem I had with Conan Exiles. Um, like, they say, like, oh yeah, you can build like this... There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can make, and you can smelt, and you can do all those things, but the timers that they put on everything, and eventually the, the requisite amount of resources you need to make anything is so exorbitant that it's like, I don't have the time in reality to wait. Like, you can turn one of your enemies into a thrall, but the literal time on making that thrall is like 15 real world hours and you need to keep feeding the person who's actually working that machine so I have to keep hunting resources for the 15 hours that that is going to happen or the timer stops and I'm sitting there like why am I doing this what is the purpose why am I spending so much time, like, trying to catch all the lobsters in the world when my beehives just give me honey every day and it never degrades or expires? I might as well just do that. Why, why do, for my new suit of armor that's going to give me two more armor, why do I have to find, like, 80,000 rock? 80,000 stone or something? So that I can smelt down to hard stone and wait like five hours for my smelters to get enough product so I can actually do like there's just a point where it's like okay this is just ridiculous I can't I, I, I can't waste my time doing because what's the point it's just kind of a pointless exercise in futility I don't want to do it and I was trying to do it by setting like when I set down the parameters for the world that I went into by myself um, can we just 10x everything? So basically, like, can I 10x collect and 10x, 10x experience for everything so that I could just max out my level and get way more resources? And even then, it started to feel exorbitant <laughs> toward the, <laughs> toward the end. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, I was like, this, this is the kind of thing where, like, if... If Fallout 76 is saying, like, we want to model ourselves after, you know, survival titles like an Ark or a Conan, I'm like, <laughs> well, right out of the gate, yeah, made a mistake. Because <laughs> I've played those games, and I don't like them. <laughs> they don't work for me. I didn't like Ark. I, I didn't like Conan. I tried. I tried, folks. Can't. Just can't. Um, and in those games, you don't actually get to choose whether you're good or evil, so. You just kill, like God intended. You just kill, uh, either, uh, dinosaurs, or, uh, like, primal monster creatures. We're or... just here for murder, like the gods wanted us to be. Perfect. Yes. I... That's all I ever want to do. Well, you know, you do build an altar to your god in Conan. And Which so, one? Uh, the one you chose at the start. Ah, there's, okay. There's like five or six. When when you when you start your character, you determine which god you actually serve, and you can build a temple to them, and then they give you gifts and stuff when you upgrade the stupid temple. Blood and, by the blood god. Who's the blood god? Whoever. Skulls for the skull throne. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I think my god was the god of murder or something, and I was like, oh, alright. Same god. <laughs> Probably. I modeled my character after Xena Warrior Princess, so I figured that made oh, sense. Dear. 
I thought that it made sense for me. Um, yeah, I... Those, those systems just... Uh, survival mechanics can work in a game. I just don't necessarily think that they should be the whole game. Um, because I, I find it to be very tedious at a certain point. Uh, Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. What would you consider, out of curiosity, what would you consider, like, a a healthy level of, like, survival mechanics in a game where it's not going to weigh the game down or oh, overpower man. it? I suppose one where you build shelter is fine, but one where you have to eat every single day, like, three times and get clean water is a bit much. Hardcore it's why, like, a game like mm -hmm. DayZ... Yeah. For instance, where it's like, yeah, you have to eat. You have to go find food. You have to go find more food. Yeah. Oh, go find more food. Go find fresh water. Yeah. You know, it's a little bit too real to really, like, unless you're hardcore into that stuff, it's a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If yeah. the game lets you opt into, like, real world learn being able to survive these things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I... Fallout was great. You can automatically take a sip of your trusty Fallout canteen every once in a while. And it reminds you of that because, you know, here's your interval. So if you wanted to learn how often that had to happen. Right. Right. But if you're not someone who wants to play that, most of the options don't care. Yeah. Right. I did like the fact they included a survival mode. The hardcore. Um, I thought about it, but it was yeah. I tried it once and it was super hard. Like yeah, the the weird not the survival thing. aspect, just the way they ramped up the difficulty of all the monsters. It's like, all right, you can't oh. do both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I met a I met a fly, not a not like one of the the corazons or whatever they're called. A bloatfly. A, a bloat Killed fly. Me. Yeah. Those. Yeah, those. Are I those assume are. it wrecked you. Paul, hmm? I assume it, the fly wrecked you. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like I think I had gotten to like the first death claw in the game. Oh like, God! Really, at the beginning of the game, and I was like, "All right, cool." I mean, it's usually kind of pain in the ass, but I was like, "Right." It takes less damage, and I have less ammo. And it's like, how am I supposed to kill this thing? Like, I tried, and I died, and I died, and yeah. I died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what's interesting, though? If you actually yeah. look at it, um, Fallout New Vegas, right, uh, will ha has, has a hardcore mode, which, which does the survival mechanics, so you have to think about your thirst and your hunger and, and sleep meters and stuff. But difficulty is actually a separate meter altogether. I, I realized this when I actually started. You can actually play the game on easy, but with the hardcore survival rules. So you can actually make all the enemies pretty simple to take care of, but leave all the hardcore mechanics in place. That's what I did, by the way. And it was... Oh, good. Yeah, and it works out perfectly fine. Because uh, because you can you can take down everything, but I wanted to actually see if I could just do it in hardcore mode. Um, now, Outer Worlds actually has one that's called Supernova difficulty, uh, but that literally is that everything is way way harder, and that you have to eat and drink and sleep and do all those things. And if your companion characters go down in combat, they are gone. Forever. Dead is dead. But they are dead. The only reason I didn't choose that is I went, I don't know who these people are. I don't know if I care about them yet. I don't want you hurting me this way. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's the <laughs> thing about, like, the hardcore modes and stuff like that is that I don't usually want to play them, especially the first time through, because I really want to <laughs> see everything the game has to offer, and I'm worried that those are going to restrict my ability to do that so or or possibly take out things that i would have liked to see um because yeah if any of my campaign characters had just gone down 
like, well, that's the end of that storyline. <laughs> I, w I would have really liked to see that, because I think there's also limited save options for you in that mode. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's usually one of the other things, too. Or oh the, uh, the roguelike, if you die, you can't load your uh, <clears throat> save ever again. I really, I really would like it if they at least let you save at some point. That would have been great. Well, it, it's one of those things where sometimes they, they're like, yeah, you can reset however many times you want, you nerd. And sometimes they're like, no, no, we're gonna, we're gonna s put this painful mechanic in, and you're gonna have to deal with it, and that's the end of it. Yeah. You don't, get to, you don't get to walk around and be like, ah, I made a slight mistake, so I can say it. No, no, you're gonna, you're gonna get shot in the face, and you're gonna have to deal with the consequences. You're gonna sh and, get shot in the face uh, and deal with it. <laughs> I, on one hand, I appreciate that approach. On the other hand, you're also shooting me in the pinky toe and killing me, so I'm kind of annoyed. Yeah, your shotgun happened to shoot me in the pinky toe. But because the way you have scaled damage, you're murdering me. Right. I'd like right. to survive a miss, please. Yeah. Yeah. It winged me. Oh, you're dead. Blood poison. Yeah, I um I have a certain thing where if the survival mechanics in a game start to get to a point where that seems to be all there is to the game, I'm no longer interested. Um when they start to become, like, the core of what I'm doing, I just start to find it tedious and kind of silly. Uh, and that's only I, games where survival isn't the objective. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's the thing, is that it, when people say, like, oh, I want to create a survival game, I think to myself, um, well, I mean, you can do that. Uh, sure, but I'm gonna tell you that it's going to appeal to a very specific kind of gamer, and, um, that ain't me. Like, it's just, it's not, that's, that's not going to be my t cup of tea, um, because a lot of the systems that they put into survival games are annoying. Degrading equipment is annoying. It, it just, it just is. I, it like, depends I, on the rate it decays at. Well, Honestly, but a lot of them it's way too fast. It's it's way too fast. Like at like even going back to New Vegas, but you know they do it in Outer Worlds too. It's it's like you know no, after a couple days of use, a gun is not almost unusable. Like you, especially if you're using AK forty seven. But like and, and like blades and stuff like that, like. No, they're not. I can understand to... using a whetstone, oh. like having to sharpen it, get burrs off it, and yeah. shit with it. Yeah, but well, like you, you've been using it, you have absolutely murdered everyone you've met for the last three days with this specific knife. Yeah, it's gonna take some wear and tear, but not. Oh, it's unusable. I see you have used this knife three times. Yeah, damn shame. Yeah. That's a that's a damn shame. I guess that knife is uh, no longer good. Can't use that knife anymore. Sorry. Um, and the way that the rate at which food decays, that drives me nuts. It's like no, especially non-perishable food. Yeah. Well, yeah, especially non-perishable food. But like I, even even perishable food. Your like... salted canned food has expired. Yeah, that's the thing that always bothered me. Like, in Kingdom Come Deliverance, it's like, yeah, okay, you just got this 80 pounds of venison. Okay, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna cook it now. And still, even after you cook it now, it's like, well, two days, it's spoiled. No! <laughs> no, these things last for months, that's why we did this. Yeah, I, I preserved it. Oh, well, if you salt it, it will last three days. No, if I salt it, it should last... A month. It shouldn't go bad this fast. It doesn't make sense. Why are you doing like, this? I will invest the time into doing the stupid things. If you make trying to do these things a little harder, that's fine. Don't tell me all the time I put into getting salt means jack. Yeah. 
Exactly. It's it, like, you know what? You want to put realism in your game. I, could, I, I had done a whole uh, video about that. Um, realism in, in a game is uh, a, a fine <laughs> if you really want it, but there is a point where uh, you get to a point where it's almost unrealistic the try what you're trying to do for realism. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the example that I had actually used that I was primarily talking about was a game called Outward, which was kind of one that fell a little bit off the radar. Um, but it was basically, like, in concept, the game was a great idea. You know, what about if you weren't the chosen one? What about if you were just some dude or dudette that literally just, like, your family owned this this lighthouse you were just merchants you were traders your ship and all of your product went down and you start out the game you're just in debt you're not a great warrior you're not a mage or anything like that you don't even know how to use magic you're just somebody who is now in debt and you need to pay back this debt to the town you just got to raise some funds so how are you going to do that well you're probably going to have to go out into the wilds and you're probably going to have to find some treasure and you're you're probably going to have to try to make a go of it. In theory, it's a really interesting idea. In practice, trying to create a realistic game because that's what they were going for. What what would a realistic fantasy setting be? Well, you can't really make that because it's fantasy. So, it's not it's not really going to be realistic in general. Um, but it's kind of also an excuse to put in systems that are bad for user uh, experience. Like, the thing that really annoyed me was that to get anywhere in the game, you have to hoof it. There's no fast travel. Um, there's no public transportation of any kind. Uh, it, there's magic in this world, but you can't use teleporters. There's no teleporters or anything. So literally, the only way I can go around this entire map is to walk from one place to another place. Yep. And, and and that can actually be not a problem, depending how big the world is. Well, it, yeah. they also spread it out a lot, and through multiple maps. Just to make it so that you know that you, you're not allowed to pass, right? Right. But also because it doesn't really make sense in context, because we've also, we've already established that there are ships that transport people from one port to another, and that there are actually, like, these suburban, these, like, onyx deer that, that, uh, haul caravans. So, so it feels like there's plenty of ways that you could go from one place to another at these major trading hubs in the world that would have made sense. And they just didn't include it. And it almost, what it does is basically it artificially inflates the time of the game. But the time that you are now spending with it is majority just walking from one place to another and um uh yeah i mean if you're if you're you know hideo kojima you make death stranding with that but you know it, but if you're this indie developer you you you're you're just expanding the time because you start to realize that the world really is not nearly as big as other epic rpgs and the only way they can really make it feel expansive is if you're slowed down from actually going anywhere in that game, um, it's just it, it starts to feel a little it's bit artificial. It's almost like you needed a pad runtime. I, I, yeah, weird. <laughs> it really it really did. And there's just there's a lot of things that were in that game that just felt very uh, unrealistic for like like it's a world of magic, but it's also a world of people who actually can like make maps. You would really hope that. Um, Maybe I could, like, put a marker on the map of where I want to go, and I could follow that. Or, like, you could tell me where I am on the map I am looking at. That would have been great. Because I don't want to guess where I might be on the map. Um, but I guess that's realistic. I have no idea where I am. Can you tell me where I am? No. This is where it got really well, annoying then. for me. I, I got onto like the second map area. I I I went down in combat, but like this is the this is the very realistic game. 
The thieves come and they slash me with their sword a lot. I fall down. Somebody comes and rescues me and takes me to a takes me to a camp and and gives me a flask to make me feel better. So that's realistic. Cuz you never die. Yep. You never die. You, you it's just like when when you go down in combat in outward something happens. Uh, you get rescued or you get put into a jail cell or something happens. But but you're a, you're in that a different place on the map. Criminal, therefore you must serve your sentence. Yeah, exactly. Well, if you're near like the big forts and stuff that don't like you, you might end up in the jails there. But you know, whatever. Then then you have to very easily figure out how to tell them, yeah, I can help out as a cook, and then get all of your equipment back, and then you just go and try to I attack. Can help out. I'm really good with knives. I'm really, I'm really good. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, go get my go be, get my backpack. Cause there's there's a whole mechanic too where you can drop your backpack and then you can dodge. You can't dodge like if you have the backpack on. But I start to realize how stupid that is because if I put my backpack down, and then I I die in combat, I get popped onto somewhere else on the map and have to figure out where my backpack is and go back to it. But if I just leave my backpack on, if I fall in combat. My backpack's still on when I wake up. So, screw dodge. <laughs> it doesn't really matter to me. Um, but anyway, they like they, they just transport you just somewhere on the map. And this is the point where I started to get really frustrated with it. Because I wake up and I'm like, okay, maybe you can triangulate your location based on like uh, places that are around. And you can look at the map and see if, if those correspond to something. And I see a windmill. And I'm like, okay, I'll open the map and I'll see where it says there's a windmill. Well, god damn it, there are two old windmills listed on this map. One is at the top of the map. The other is at the bottom of the map. I have no fucking idea which one I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> I have no other way of figuring out where I am right now. So I, I like either either I am on this side of the map or the completely opposite side of the map. Who knows which one of those is accurate? It was around that time that I was like, oh, they really should have improved some systems here. And I went online and it turns out that like the developers were like, no, we don't want to expend those systems. Okay, well indie developers. We like, yeah, that felt unrealistic. Right? Yeah, that's a, that's one of those cases of an indie dev with a very specific vision that they do not want to compromise for user interface issues. <laughs> like when uh, when I was playing Kingdom Come, and um, they're like, "We want this combat to feel like real medieval combat." Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing at any time. They made this whole thing where um, you you swing the sword, but you can swing your sword in five different directions. So you're doing like downward thrusts from the side, upward thrusts from the side, and then one that cleaves straight down. Or you can thrust in and out. But 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 how you determine what you're do what you're doing is based on where you're looking in relation to the opponent that you're targeting. So what happens when I do a downward swing? Well, my camera adjusts all the way down. Now I'm looking at the floor. Well, that means that uh, if I try to attack again, I automatically am going to start going up because they've changed my my uh, correlation. Um, so so now I got to like reorient myself. And blocking is done the same way, based on, on directions. But this kind of, like, completely goes out the window when you have to deal with two guys. Because I can only target one at a time. So, so the other guy can just beat on me in from the back while I'm trying to do this very intricate combat maneuver with the one guy in front of me. Because <laughs> there's no way I could, like, it's try to... It's an amazing play. duel to see from the front. But yeah. uh, from the back, it's kind of just blood force trauma. It's just mm -hmm. kind of a, a pointless exercise. And so there's this one battle that you get to, one of these big battles. 
and it, I swear, you're just watching like a hundred guys, or uh, maybe maybe like thirty, I guess, just 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 attacking each other. And I'm like, I don't even want to get into the middle of this because I know that it's just pointless. Like, and uh, ultimately, I get in there, and it's it's like ten seconds, and it's like just utter chaos, and I don't know what I'm doing, and I die. And it's just, and, and it just, I had to go through that so many times. Because, uh, because it, it was it was that kind of a combat, and the only way you can actually save your game is if you drink uh, a, a vial of this thing called Savior Schnapps. It's the special liquid in the game that lets you save your game. <laughs> um, very realistic. Save, save your game Schnapps. Got it. Schnapps. It's like how vodka makes you remember where you were before you started drinking vodka. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that kind of thing. Um, it was just systems like that. But what I what I said was really funny about that when I when I talked about it at length in the ATP was um, it's kind of weird because it forces you to look at other systems in the game that you can exploit to try and get around the systems in the game that suck. So like you're so like okay, I don't want to get into active combat. All right. I'm going all in on the stealth mechanics. <laughs> um, I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to have to get into an active combat situation. All right. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? Oh, like, like it's it's really hard to steal or, or do anything like that. All right. Uh, I'm going to wait till these folks are asleep, and then I'm going to, like, just choke them out so that they take a, take a long nap. Uh, and then I'm just going to steal everything in their house. <laughs> and then I'm going to leave. And that's how I can make money. There was this one part where you go to the bathhouse, and I wake up, and it's the middle of the night, and everybody at the bathhouse is asleep. And I'm like, oh, they've got some chests, and there's probably some pretty nice stuff, but they're going to catch me if I start sti Uh, Okay, I got a great idea. And I just went around the bathhouse, and while they were in the beds, I just, I, I just, I just uh, choked them unconscious. <laughs> Just everybody in the whole thing. And it's like, you won't you remember this in the morning. Like, what if I killed, I semi made all of you unconscious. Yeah, I just, I just unconscious. And so they're, they're all, yeah, they're not dead. They're just choked out. So I, 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 did, <laughs> I did that for everybody. You're not waking up anytime soon, but you are waking up. Then I took everything off of their person and then everything out of all of their chests. But no one saw me do it because they were all asleep. So I'm just I mean, running around. Happen. I'm just running around the bathhouse at that point, just picking up everything because no one even has. I don't even have to worry about people hearing me. Everyone's just <laughs> unconscious, and I come, everyone's out fucking cold. Uh, everyone's out cold. Everyone, and I come back a couple days later, and everyone's talking to me like nothing happened. <laughs> Cause, cause Did no you hear one... about this strange thief in the middle of the night who somehow snuck past everyone? And also, did you notice these weird markings on my neck? I don't know how this came about. Yeah, everybody's like, where'd these weird fucking bruises on our necks come from? Would but... you like to hire some of our services? I don't think it has anything to do yes. with the fact that uh, we, we suddenly had all our goods stolen. Also, friend, you seem to have a lot more wealth recently. What happened to you? <laughs> what what fortune looks... have you stepped into, my friend? That looks like my shoes. <laughs> No, you're just thinking too much. <laughs> Don't worry about Are it. Are those my shoes? Crack knuckles. Choke out again. <laughs> maybe maybe that's the end result. They woke up, they had all their goods stolen, and they felt that they had just been recently choked out, and they go, ah, okay, yeah, not challenging them on that one. Yeah. You know, the, the funny thing is, though, though it, like, they wanted to create a realistic, like, 14th century bohemia. <laughs> In this whole thing, it's like I I always kind of shudder when people are like, "We want to create a realistic interpretation of." It's like, oh god, this game is gonna be it's Skyrim without dragons or like magic or anything. Is kind it's of Skyrim but less fun. We want a realistic, realistic yes. interpretation of oh god. Yeah, it's like oh god. <laughs> what are you gonna suck the fun out of now? You realize that these are games, right, folks? Like games usually. Realism games usually don't work too well together. Uh, that's not necessarily the... I, I, like, realism, when I hear realism now, it's like, oh, you're going to make a shitty UI experience for me. Great. There you go. <laughs> you're going to make uh, this... Yeah. You're, you're going to make this basically just a slog for me to deal with. 
uh, to, so that it feels realistic. But some of the weirdest realistic things that happen in the game are like, uh, that that are are not even close to realistic. It's like I kept getting over encumbered in Kingdom Come, and then I started to realize, oh crap! If I just buy a horse, even if it's like a really crappy horse, the horse has an inventory space, and from my main menu, I don't even have to be near my horse. From anywhere I want, I can just take stuff and just shove it into my horse's inventory. And, like, the horse can carry more than I can. So, here, you take all of this venison that I just... You take all the horse meat, <laughs> and, I'll just, and I'll just keep piling it into your inventory and, and not worry about it. Um, and then the other weird thing that happened was uh, I was, like, in the outskirts of a town like, past the city walls, just kind of, like, in, in, in the boonies, and there was this couple, and I did that uh, choky steely thing that I normally do. <laughs> choky steely thing. The choky steely timey whiny thing. And, and, like, while I'm there, some reason, a guard comes by and starts asking me about this, and I'm like, dude, who the hell would have called you? <laughs> No one could have called you <laughs> Why to you tell so me questions. Right now? It's that GTA thing, like where, like, where, like you could literally, you could, you can, you can, you can stab somebody on a beach that's completely unoccupied, and somehow the cops still know. The, <laughs> the you get a star, and the cops just are on you now, and it's the most unrealistic thing. <laughs> I would totally take a system, though, where they were, like, you see people going, to, you see the investigators, like, coming in to look at the crime scene and take people's statements and question you about where your involvement and you have to, like, do speech checks to figure out if you can. <laughs> that would be interesting. I could deal with that. I'd like to see that, but uh, that would be realistic. I'll take that kind of realism. They're not gonna make that. That'd be a pain in the butt. <laughs> it, but no, but think about how interesting okay. it would be. Oh. Like, like, yeah. oh, you, you, you took somebody and you, 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 you stab them, right? And you walk away, and then you come back to that beach later or whatever, and you see like the forensics team, and the, <laughs> and the, the tape. They've like set the tape up, and there's a chalk outline in the sand. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, that's so cool <laughs> that they actually, but in a game like GTA, you'd go through, you'd go through a street during one of the main missions and coming back across that street, it would literally look like you just went into a war zone. It would just be like caution tape everywhere <laughs> all over the place and forensics teams like we don't have enough forensic teams for this guy. Dude. In GTA, you we don't have enough. Do not anyone. cross tape for this fucking guy. Yeah, not for not for GTA. Yeah, it wouldn't work very well in GTA. But no. or or Pull red flamethrower and be like, you sure you want to investigate that? And they'd be like, yeah, and then you torch everybody. <laughs> red Dead Red Dead Redemption uh tried to do something about it, like when they did Red Dead Redemption Two. Um, but it made the most convoluted system in order to try and rectify <laughs> what it was doing. It's like, okay, so if you go into a town and you have a face mask on, then they won't recognize you as Arthur Morgan, uh, so you won't get a bounty. Unless somebody sees you with the face mask again when you go back in. But if you don't have the face mask on, but you change your clothes... Then an eyewitness may see you, but the cops won't see. Like it, it's just, oh my god, this is too damn complicated. <laughs> just say I. Why you gonna have to make things so complicated? <laughs> Back to two thousand one, eh? <laughs> <laughs> We're Avril Lavigne in it up. Call Avril Lavigne because things just got complicated. Um. <laughs> All right, Mr. CSI Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, then I do. Do you want to keep that title? Because that sounds like a great title to have for a while. Just, yeah. Yes, I am Mr. CSI Miami. <laughs> Mr. CSI Miami. And then I put on the glasses. 
I gotta put it yeah! on. Yeah! Yeah! The he plays in the background. Yeah, the, you, you gotta get the yeah going. Um, yeah, well, a lot of people don't know, but uh, Avril Lavigne is really the inspiration for most Rockstar games. Uh, if you, <laughs> they don't want to talk about it. Um, it would be <laughs> it's because she's Canadian. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, San Andreas. They're was also really just... in that gr that. Uh, regret of grunge phase where they they are kind of embarrassed by the early two thousands music they liked, mm. where it was fun, but now they feel like they're not supposed to like that anymore. Yeah, true. Well, you know, uh, Skater Boy was the inspiration for GTA San Andreas. I don't think so. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure. But <laughs> do you know so? Uh, sure. I I sure do. He says he doesn't think so, but if he doesn't know, can he really refute refute it? Yeah, um, I don't know. When you're gone was the inspiration for Ellie Noir. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's true. Uh, now I want to listen to the discography for Avril Lavigne so I can actually match them up to Rockstar games. Um, I should uh make a video of that apparently. <laughs> <laughs> a video out of it, not a video game. No, I'm not gonna make a, a video game out of it. That would take time. I don't. <laughs> that would take time and energy. We're not here about to do that. We're here to make things worse. I'm I'm here That's to do true. things. Hello, our name is EA. Wait, what? Accurate. <laughs> you know the the thing about it is is that I find I find EA's current arc to be fascinating because it feels like what they're trying to do now is to make themselves look slightly less bad than all the other game companies that have made themselves look way, way worse. Because... <laughs> not that bad, guys. Look at these guys. Yeah. They're, they're the worst, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, cool. I mean we're not Bethesda. Yeah, we're not Bethesda. We're, we're, we're not all these other companies. Like, 2K is getting real bad, right, guys? Think of it. Like, I feel like what they're doing with... Um, I've w watched a lot of media around uh, Star Wars Fallen Order, Jedi Fallen Order, and um, apparently that's that's way, way more than what we actually thought it was going to be. Like, it's, it's not just Force Unleashed, but for the next generation. It's actually, like, there's, there's upgrades, there's uh, story elements that are dynamic because you can go to different worlds at different times. There's, like, a, there's a lot more to it than that. And um, people are like, wait, EA is actually making that game. Uh, and uh, it's, it's mostly due to the fact that um, uh, <laughs> they started to realize that they've kind of screwed the pooch so many times that at some point they might have to actually give players something they wanted. No. Uh, <laughs> where, where they, because they made a statement right up at the front, like, uh, nope, we're not going to do microtransactions, and we're not going to do multiplayer, and we're never going to include them in the game. Like, that was the statement that they made for this. And that was what people had asked them to do, to do a single-player-focused Star Wars licensed game. And after the utter, f utter disgrace of, like, Battlefront 2, I think they started to get real damn worried that they might lose the Star Wars license and a lot of their fan base. So they were like, uh, we got to get a really reputable studio on making a game. So Respawn, you got anything going on right now? You, you, you do good jobs for single player campaigns, right? Remember how we kind of cannibalized Titanfall 2 so we could acquire you for less money? <clears throat> well, you know what? <laughs> um, maybe you could come and do this game for us. And, um, and so, I, in some ways, I feel like they're trying to pull an Anakin Skywalker themselves, uh, by offering a game that people might Killing actually Killing all the want. children? Yeah, they killed off a lot of children, um, with the previous games, and now they're trying to, uh, redeem themselves in the eyes of their, uh, of their son. Uh, for the, for the good of the galaxy. Uh, a lesson that, uh, their grand, their, their grandson inevitably will completely miss when the new movies come along. Um, but uh, but it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be interesting to actually see what happens with that, mostly because uh, depending on whether it succeeds or fails is probably going to determine whether EA continues to do all of the loot boxes and microtransactions and surprise mechanics into the future. Because if they can produce a game that's literally a single-player experience, no multiplayer, no microtransactions, and it makes them a lot of money, 
they probably won't be interested in doing those other things uh, as much. They might kind of push that to the backside because, oh, we don't have to do that stuff to make money on a game. Uh, and they won't have an excuse to do it anymore either because they'll have an example. It is de also dependent on whether the game is good or not. Um, yes. Because if if the game sucks, like, you know, don't buy it. But if the game's good, I kind of hope people do, just so that EA understands that, um, hey, if you have a good studio and you let that good studio make a good game of their own accord, doing what they do best, and um, you don't try to predatorily market it after the fact to try and rake in tons of cash, uh, yeah, that actually ends up doing pretty good for you. <laughs> You might find that that actually works out pretty damn well. Don't keep making Anthem. Please don't <clears throat> just make Anthem. <laughs> Let Bioware make an actual game. The one to make from the start. And don't try to monetize a bunch of it. And, and make it a complete game. Because that's the other thing, is that they're going to have to make a complete game out of the box for Fallen Order. Because if they're not doing microtransactions and add-on stuff and everything, they're going to have to do what God of War did. And just have the game complete and fully formed when it ships. And that's almost unheard of now. Shockingly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Outer Worlds basically did do that, though. You, credit where credit's mm -hmm. due. It's, it's a complete game. Uh, and, I mean, they did say that they they have thought about doing some add-ons where they would have other worlds that they would use as expansions that you could go to in the game and expand it that way, which is like, yeah, yeah I mean, that was happened in New Vegas and those two. Those add-ons were great. So, um, you know, if they did something like that, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll be on board for that. But, um but you know it it doesn't it doesn't stop the main game from being really really good so as long as they can as long as the main game is really good like i understand that borderlands 3 is probably going to have like th four different expansion packs in the future but it didn't stop the fact that the main game that they gave you out of the box was a complete experience yeah. and and that's good yeah. that's good that that's fine don't tell me though that the real game is going to be in the DLC. <laughs> if you, if you, if you tell the me the best real part game, of the game is actually the DLC that we expanded the plot line in. Yeah, yeah. Unless you know you found new ideas to really dive into the ways players developed their plot line, mm -hmm. and then added this whole new arc that completely changed the way people could see it because you had this new concept that completely changed. Yeah, you know. If you somehow find something intensely different in ex in the experience, okay, great. Yeah. But I'm gonna get guess that uh, you made the game and went, ah, yes, this is what I want the player to experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's that's kind of like the for me at least that's where I I draw the line between a, a good DLC plan and a bad DLC plan. Um, a good DLC plan for me is, like, uh, unique experiences that don't fall inside the purview of the main gaming experience. Uh, stuff that doesn't really work in the main game, but that really do expand upon it in a way you might not have thought about. Um, bad DLC is where you're like, oh, the game didn't really work right. Now we have to make the game... G basically, like... People will tell you continuously the best expansion for Fallout 3 was Broken Steel, but the only reason that is true is because it fixed the ending that sucked. So, <laughs> so I don't actually consider it, like, the best expansion. <laughs> like, I liked that you had more levels and you could do that stuff, but... I don't consider the, oh, we didn't do a good job on the ending of the game. We made a DLC to fix that <laughs> as an acceptable. Like, uh, Andromeda did, I believe. Oh, did Whoops. they do it? Did they? Mass Effect. Oh, no, actually, Mass Effect, they never even did DLC. Was it Mass Effect 3 or was it Andromeda? Oh, Mass Effect 3. 
Mass Effect, oh, but Mass Effect Three, they didn't make that like DLC. They made that like a free thing to try and uh, expand upon the ending. No, the problem they had with Mass Effect Three was um, this this epic that they had set up where you had made all these choices through three whole games to try and get yeah, you to I'm, the end. I'm yeah, familiar with what happened at the end of it. Yeah, no, just pick your color ending. Yep. Yeah. Do you want the blue pill, the red pill, or the green pill? I'm gonna mix all three. Yeah. Oh, oh, and then they added the one where you can just refuse to take any ending. And you just get the fourth where you just die. And everything happens the way it was going to anyway. Hey, congratulations, you had no influence over the story. How's yeah. that feel? Yeah. Great. Awful? Great. That was like what they added in as like another option after the fact. That was something that they added in. Good for them. <laughs> I was I was like, I don't even understand. I mean, yeah, Good okay. job, you had an even worse option. I have the choice to have not made a, a an influence on this world at all. Congratulations, folks. Um, I, uh, yeah, that, that wasn't great. No, what happened with Andromeda, because <laughs> I played Andromeda, is they had these grandiose ideas of what they'd be able to do with Andromeda after the fact. And you could tell that they had some, like, ideas of what Money. they might want to do with story DLC afterward. Like, um, mm. what was it? The uh, Tally's Race. I can't remember which one. The Quarians. The, the Quarian mm. arc had gotten lost when they went to the Andromeda Galaxy. So you got the idea that there might eventually be a DLC where you find the Quarian arc and can, can recover it. Um... But none but of that, that ever made it. Huh? Sorry. That was for the sequel. Oh, was that was that supposed to be for the I sequel? I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. I thought that it sounded like the kind of thing that might be DLC that would expand upon the storyline a little bit more. Um because uh, that was like a specific thing that, that felt like it was something they were going to try to develop later. The other arcs had like made it, but this particular one had... Oh, I guess there were a couple that didn't make it. Well, a lot of Andromeda is trying to recover the other arcs that didn't, apparently. You have to find the Asari arc and the Salarian arc, I think. And all of those. But you you still hadn't recovered the quarry in there. So I thought that maybe that would be like a thing. But they never ended up making any of that DLC. Because <laughs> the game didn't sell very well and the critics didn't like it all that much. And So, they, so the only kind of expansions that they did were just in multiplayer. Just just make some more multiplayer maps and stuff. Okay. Um, kind of feels like that's Anthem... Uh, before it was Anthem, really, now. Because <laughs> you know that they're not going to make anything more for Anthem. Um, yeah. Good times. The best of times and was the worst. <coughs> Anywho. Um, Anywho. Did we ever figure out what we were going to talk about on this episode? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. We kind of ended up talking about all of it, but none of it was... Uh, uh, useful. No, well. <laughs> well, hey, uh, thanks, folks, for, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for joining us on this, on this episode of, of Delve Live. The surprise, the shyest surprise. Oh, that's what I should have called this. Oh dear. I'm gonna yeah, when I when I post this as a post, I'm gonna call it Shia Surprise. As Delve oh Live, Shia Surprise. <laughs> oh I, I will read that later, but unfortunately my dogs are telling me that I need to go to bed. Yes, yeah, it's right at that time. Perfect so. timing. We're gonna get on out of here. And thank you, DC, and thank you, Paul. Coming Happy by to be here. Yeah. And uh yeah. Until the next time. We, when we get another course, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. We'll no, figure out. Another planet or not something else stupid to explore. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and we can, uh, we can find out. By the way, this was sponsored by Spacer's Choice.
Uh, it's not the best choice. It's Spacer's choice. You tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Spacer's choice. Oh, Perfect. so from all of us here, uh, the Corkfit Chills of Spacer's Choice, thank you for joining us, and we will see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.